हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू द कोर्स मन स्टैक पोर्टफोलियो एप्लीकेशन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू माई नेम इज सत्या एंड आई विल बी द इंस्ट्रक्टर ऑफ दिस कोर्स सो बिफोर गेटिंग स्टार्टेड विद द एक्चुअल डेमो ऑफ अवर पोर्टफोलियो एप्लीकेशन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स डिस्कस अबाउट द टेक् स्टैक सो हियर आई एम गोइंग टू डिवाइड अवर मन स्टैक पोर्टफोलियो टेक् स्टैक इन टू टू पार्ट पार्ट वन एंड पार्ट टू so in the first part we are going to build a static portfolio with the help of react and tailwind css and coming to the second part we are going to convert that static portfolio into the dynamic portfolio using node js express js and mongodb and then after we are going to build an admin panel to control the portfolio and to build that admin panel we will be using the and design ui components so this is our tech stack now without any moment let's get started with the demo of our application here we go guys this is the landing page of our portfolio application so let's start from the header so if you observe the header i have three different letters which are nothing but the short form of my name so k is the first letter of my first name s is the first letter of my middle name r is the first letter of my last name and then after i have a intro section so i am introducing about myself hi i am satya prakash reddy i build things for the web and i have a small description about my current job and current company so then i am going to have the about section in this about section i am going to describe about myself that means how i got the interest into this it field and web development field what are my sample projects and all those things then after we are going to showcase our skills here you can see here are a few technologies i have been working with recently javascript react node js express js mongodb firebase and aws so then we are going to have our experience so in the experience we will be having two different things at the left side we are going to have the period and the selected period information will be shown at the right side so here you can see i am going to select the 2018 to 19 period so in this period i am a freelancer that means self employed and here is some sample description and in 2022 present i am a web development instructor in the company udemy and some small description and 2021 to present i worked as react developer in the shaytech company and also some small description so then after we will be having our projects showcase so here also we are going to have the same ux so project title and the information so whenever you click on any other project the information will be changed here you can see like this after the projects we are going to have the courses so this is optional for you because i am a web developer come instructor so i'll be having the courses to display in my portfolio that's the reason i have added this so i have some courses like react development course back end course html css bootstrap full stack web development like that then after i'm going to have the contact section so if anyone like it my portfolio and if they want to contact me i have my contact details in an object so name gender age email mobile and uh, address and at the right side we are going to have some small animation about the contact and last but not the least we are going to have our favorite thing designed and developed by and the developer by name so this is the sample portfolio so nothing new in this now i have a simple question for you so after publishing this portfolio i have changed my email address so how to update that in my portfolio in normal scenarios how we will do we will go to our code base we will update the portfolio phone number and we will redeploy it but now let's see how i am going to update my email address so here i am just going to copy this domain and i'll put it here and here i am going to have admin login so my portfolio will be having the admin so now i am going to log in with my credentials login login successfully so this is the portfolio admin panel so here we can control the entire portfolio so our task is to update the email address now let's go and update that 
so I'm, I'll go to the contact section. So here I have the email address. So instead of Satyaprakash195, I'm going to make it Satyaprakash123 at gmail.com. I'm going to save it. Contact updated successfully. Now if I refresh here, you can see my email address got updated successfully. Now I have one more task. So I want to add a new project into my portfolio. How you will do in the normal scenarios. Again, you will go to your react code base. You will add a new project and you will redeploy it. Now let me show you how I will do. So projects, add project. I'm going to add the project title as to do list. And I'm going to copy one to do list image URL. Images. to do list image so i'll just copy this image image address description uh, newly added link nothing i'm go not going to add the link technologies also i'll just write javascript and react add here you can see project added successfully now let me go and refresh Here you can see I got the new project into my portfolio. Here you can see to do list. So like this way we can control the entire portfolio, not only adding, we can also edit all the things. Suppose if I want to display only my first name, I don't want to display my complete name. So what I'll do, uh, I'll go to my intro here. I have my first name here. I have my last name. So instead of Satya Prakash, I'm going to write S A T H Y A. That's all. Now I'm going to save it. Let's refresh. Here you can see my name got updated successfully. As I said, we can control everything. So if you see, we have intro section, about section, experiences, projects, courses, contact. So if you want to update any experience information, you can edit like this. If you want to update any project information, you can edit and you can also delete. Suppose I want to delete my to do list project that we have added now. So here you can see we have this to do list project right now. I'm going to the projects and I'll delete that project deleted successfully. If I refresh, there is no to do list here. So like this way, you can have the complete control about your portfolio in the admin panel. So this is about the Moon stack portfolio application. So right now we are having only the functionality of the portfolio in the admin panel. So in the future, we are going to control the styling also in the admin panel itself. So here you can see we are having four different colors. So this is the primary, this is the secondary, this is the tertiary and white is the normal. So we can control all these colors from the dynamic admin portal also. So this uh, will be in the next release. So right now we are going to have only functional things in the admin portal. And this application is completely responsive. So even if you open in the mobile view, there won't be any issues. So here you can see everything will be fine even in the mobile view also. So that's all guys. This is about the Monstack dynamic portfolio application. So the prerequisites for this application is you must have some basic knowledge in the react and tailwind CSS. Even if you don't have any knowledge about the Node.js also, no worries. I'm going to explain everything from the scratch. So thank you. See you all in the course. Welcome back guys. In this lecture, we are going to work on the react setup of our Monstack portfolio application. As we discussed in the promo, this course will be having two parts. In the first part, we are going to build our complete portfolio in the react. Then in the second part, we are going to make it dynamic using the Node.js and MongoDB. So here you can see that's the reason I have named our application folder name as Mon Portfolio. So first we are going to create our react application name as client in this portfolio. And in the second part, we are going to work on the backend. So mainly in the first part, we are not going to focus anything on the backend. Our focus completely will be on the front end only. That means react and tailwind CSS. So now I'm going to click on this terminal. So you should have a root folder definitely when you are building a Monstack application. 
so you can name it anything like your name or anything so here i have named it as mon portfolio now first i am going to create a new react application name with the client npx create react hyphen app followed by the application name client so whenever we build any full stack application we will name our front end as the client and back end as the server here also i am going to follow the same manner press enter so it will create a new react application with the name client in the mon portfolio folder so once it is done i'll get back to here it might take a while depending upon our system as well as the internet performance here you can see already uh, the folder got created here but it has to install all the node modules dependencies everything so mostly it will take uh, around 1 to 2 minutes of time so until then please wait all right guys here you can see our react application has created successfully so we got all the required files and folders in the client so now uh, to run this application we have to navigate into this client folder so to navigate you just have to type the command cd followed by the folder so here our folder name is client c l i e n t client now we are in the client folder so to run the react application we just have to use the command npm start so by default it will start our application in the local host 3000 port so if there was any application already running in that port so obviously it will ask for the another port so that means 3001 or 2 like that so i don't have any applications running on the 3000 port so i got my application ready in local host 3000 here you can see so now the first and foremost thing we have to do whenever a new react application is created is so we just have to remove all the default stuff that we will get uh, whenever you create a new react application so we'll start with app.js so let me go and clean up the app.js so basically i don't want to uh, use comments in my applications so let me get rid of all the comments also so first of all in the app.js i'm going to put one h1 text mon portfolio and you can get rid of these two import statements let's make it everything simple you can remove all the styling which is already there in the index.css as well as the app.css because anyhow we are using the tailwind css for our styling purpose now let's go to the main file uh, index.js so get rid of all the comments and go to the public index.html here also remove all the comments this is not mandatory but uh, let's try to clean up everything that's the intention yeah that's all i think everything is clean now let's see the output to check whether anything is broken yeah nothing has broken so we have the h1 text with our project title mon portfolio so in the entire application i am going to keep the deployed version prototype in the first tab and the current version in the second tab so this is the deployed version this is the developing version so in the deployed version i have my name as the project title satya so here also i am going to keep the same name but uh, by using the uh, word called dev that means we have to understand which is the deployed version that means in which is in the production and which is in the development so let's try to add that so this is the index.html right uh, change the title from react app to your name so here i'm just writing satya and the environment is dev here you can see now we can easily differentiate what is the production version and what is the dev version so by this we have completed the react setup as well as the cleaning of the default stuff so in the next lecture we will be working on the tailwind installation and setup thank you welcome back guys in the last lecture we have completed the react application setup in our monstack portfolio so in this lecture we are going to focus on the tailwind css so let me give you a small introduction about the tailwind css so it, it is a utility framework so kind of bootstrap only but here we will be having more number of classes that's all 
so for the admin panel we will be using entity for the components but in the portfolio that means in the front end side we are not going to use any entity or other components we are going to build everything from the tailwind css itself so let me go to the tailwind official website open the first website so here you can see this is the official website of the tailwind css so now before going into the documentation and all the classes first we have to complete the setup so just click on this get started button now uh, you will be having four different set of guidelines here using the tailwind cli using post css framework guides and play cdn so as react is a framework we are going to choose the framework guides now here you will be having the list of frameworks available we just have to choose the react app create react app here click on this now you can see we have around six steps to perform i think we already completed the first step create your project so we have already completed this step now let's start from the second step so in the second step there is some documentation install tailwind css and its peer dependencies so you need not to worry about all these steps so just perform this copy this and terminate the job by using the control c and control v so it will install tailwind css as well as its peer dependencies post css and uh, auto prefixer i think we have one more uh, installation in this step only just copy this once this is done we are going to do that yeah the first installation is done now we have one more copy and before pressing enter let me show you what will happen after hitting the enter so after hitting the enter we have to get two different files in our client the first one will be tailwind.config.js and the second one will be postcss.config.js so after performing this step if you get these two files then only the installation is successful else we have to repeat so i'm just uh, hitting the enter button so let's observe the client folder we should get two different files now come on yep here you can see i got two different files postcss.config.js and uh, tailwind.config.js so don't touch these files so we just have to follow the documentation now so in the tailwind.config.js by default you just have to copy and paste this copy and paste it remove the existing code and paste it control s now uh, add the tailwind directives to your css so our main index.css file we just have to use this uh, three lines copy these three statements or three lines and paste it in the index.css so if you miss even one step in these six steps also uh, the application will break that means you cannot use the tailwind css that's all so now we just have to restart the server i think we have performed everything let's try to restart the server and test whether we got the tailwind css into our application or not so let me restart the application npm start close everything so if the tailwind installation is successful obviously the font size and the font style of this text will change so after the restarting if you observe any change in this text then our tailwind installation is successful yeah it's getting restarted please wait here we go guys it's almost ready loading in the next tab let's close these two so always i'll try to keep the production version and the development version side by side almost ready not sure why it is taking long yeah here you can see we can observe the change now mon portfolio 
so previously it was uh, something like uh, sans serif font and all those things so now it got completely different now let's try to uh, play with some of the tailwind classes to make sure all the tailwind properties and classes are working fine or not src go to the app.js so this is our h1 text now uh, so let me do one simple thing so i just want to put this h1 text in the center of the page using the tailwind css and also some bigger font size first of all uh, for this app we just have to use the class flex and also h screen and uh, item center and uh, justify center so let me explain what all these classes will do first we are going to uh, make this uh, app as flex display flex then we'll be making height 100% obviously width will also be 100% 100% by default and here we have given item center and justify center that means horizontally centered vertically center now for this h1 text i am going to increase the font size so to increase the font size you just have to use the text followed by the size so size will vary from sm to 9xl in the tailwind css so for the time being and for the example purpose i'll be using 5xl so 5xl is nothing but uh, 48 pixels so even if you want to get this type of helper messages or tool tips you just have to use the tailwind uh, intel sense extension so you will get all the uh, properties which are related in the uh, css so here you can see i have written tailwind class as flex so what these actually do in the css means it will uh, create a property display flex h screen it will create a property height is equal to 100 vh so let me show you the extension also so it's just like uh, tailwind intel sense yeah here you can see this is so if you install this you will get all the css properties when you hover on the tailwind class name now control s so the output should be we should get the mon portfolio at the center of the page with some bigger font size here you can see we got the expected output so by this we have completed the react setup as well as the tailwind installation and we also tested the tailwind installation it is working fine so in the next section we will start creating the actual front end of our portfolio thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the header of our portfolio application so before getting started let me explain you what we are building in the header part so as you can see over here in the production version we are having three letters in the header part k s r so mostly we will have uh, project titles and project logos in the header so this is the portfolio application so i just want to keep short form as my name as the header so here k is nothing but first letter of my first name s is nothing but first letter of my middle name r is nothing but first letter of my last name so like this way i have designed my header so you can choose your own format like uh, you can have your logo you can have your name here anything so just to make the unique i have designed like this so now the first and foremost thing we have to do uh, before writing the code so we have to install the react router dom library then only we could make the routes in the application so let's go to the vs code terminate the job here and install npm i react hyphen router hyphen dom yeah npm start now uh, let me have the folder structure so first i am going to make the folder pages then i am going to make the folder components yeah so in the pages first i am going to create one more that is called as the home home page in the home page i am going to have index.js index.js so let me create rfce home that's all 
now in the components first i am going to create header so the reason why i am creating this header in the components means this is the uh, similar component for both portfolio as well as the admin so that's the reason i'm making it as the normal reusable component header dot js now let's go to the app dot js and clean up everything here and import the browser router import browser router routes and also route from react router dom now let's have the parent element as the browser router and the next element as the routes and the next one will be the our uh, by default route that is called as the home and we don't need anything more routes close the browser router so we have the home page which will render on the normal local host 3000 so let's import the home component that's all let's see here you can see so in the home page i got the sample text home which is present in the home component yeah now first let's try to build the header before that we just have to choose the colors so let me explain you what is the concept of the colors so in the entire application i'll be using only three colors so this color background is my primary color and this is my secondary color and this is my uh, we can call it as the tertiary or anything so i'm using three colors except white so let me go and define the colors so you just have to define all these kind of things in the tailwind.config.js so here you can see we are having theme extend so in this you just have to write colors colors so you can make it uh, first one will be primary so something like this so let me copy using the color picker this is my primary color now then me write secondary secondary will be my orange this is my secondary color copy and paste it here and the last one will be tertiary so this kind of green will be the tertiary color so it's too difficult to copy let me see where we can copy this okay let's inspect and copy the color mm, not getting here Okay, let's try using the color picker only. Yeah. Copy. And paste it here. So anytime you can change these colors. So <laughs> I got the primary color again. So let me copy the tertiary clearly. Oh, here we are having these R. Yeah now i got this copy it's kind of green actually yeah so now i got my all three colors primary secondary tertiary so for the paragraphs and the normal things we will be using the white color only so we need not to put there so directly we can have it in the pages now let's go to the header keep only header as well as the home in the tabs this is the header this is the home now first let's create the component rfce header and then if you observe we are having the uh, padding from the borders that means uh, edges and everything is the justify between so it will be flex class with justify between property so let me do that first thing is we just have to use some padding class name is equal to i'll just apply p5 
P5 is padding 20 from all the sides and also BG primary. Now we will be having the property flex. Property flex and also justify between. Now let's try to have H1 uh, with the class name. So the first text will be orange, right? Orange is nothing but text secondary. Text secondary and the letter will be K. Let's see the output once how it is looking. So get rid of the home text. And out the component header. Here you can see I got the home text. Now uh, the color is looking different or same. Okay, nothing will happen. We will change it. So first letter will be K, second letter will be S, last letter will be R. Before that, let me adjust the font size also. So I'll use text uh, for Excel. Yeah, for Excel and also font semi bold like this font semi bold now let's copy this and paste it three times sorry paste it three times second letter will be r oh not r s yes. third letter will be r and let me change the colors so second letter will be white color last letter will be tertiary color that's all here you can see i got the colors so k s r so it's not looking exactly same due to the font style so let me bring up the font family so i'll be using montserrat font in all my applications so let me use the same in this also uh, Google fonts Google fonts open this and I think it's already got selected so let me show you for you also Montserrat so this is the font I'll use in my projects so after selecting you just have to import it this is the import statement copy and paste it in the index.css and after pasting you just have to apply the font family property for all the elements so if you want to apply any property for all the elements you just have to use the star that's all now we could observe the change in the font family here you can see we can observe the change but the only thing i feel different is the background color mm, almost yeah nothing change it's almost same only the reason why we are feeling different means we don't have the intersection yet so in the next lecture we are going to start the intersection thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to start the intersection so already we have completed the header with the primary uh, secondary as well as the tertiary colors so now let me bring up the intro section so in the intro section we are describing about ourselves. so hi i am so and so uh, what is my caption i build things for the web and a small introduction and also a get started button so no images no animations no anything so we just have the simple text of course we have the animation so whenever the page loads so let me show you like this so we will implement this later so all the animations part and the cider part everything we will implement later first we just have to complete the happy and easy path so let's start designing the intro section so in the home i'm going to keep a separate uh, component called as the intro.js RFCE uh, where is it 
index so after the header i'm going to have intro let's see here you can see i got the intro now go to the intro section first and foremost thing we have to do means for every section you have to give the minimum height as 80 vh because already uh, the header might take 20 vh or 15 vh so you just have to give the 80 vh as the minimum height for every section so i'll use h hyphen in the brackets 80 vh 80 vh so we can keep the content things at the center 80vh yeah it got applied now let me apply bg primary yeah so now uh, we don't have any section title here so from the about section we will be having the titles so in the intro we don't have any titles we just have the normal text so we can make it the flex call so everything one after another so let me use uh, here itself flex flex call item center or not item center item start uh, yeah that's all first thing will be h1 with the white color hi i am hi i am is the text so let me apply the class name text white and then we'll be having the bigger text which is the developer name so actually this will be dynamic once uh, we add the node.js h1 so it will have the property uh, class name as text uh, let me use 7xl by default and also text secondary and font semi bold so i don't want this space in my name yeah then we have uh, some quotation about ourselves what we mainly do h1 same thing copy the same class and put it here and the color will be text white and here just make it text 6xl then let's copy the paragraph and put it in the p tag p dot text white paragraph now let's see what we got yeah we got this text so now we have to make this alignment first thing is uh, we just have to use the uh, left and right margins okay so let's go to the home this is the index right class name so if you want to use the margins from both left and right uh, what you have to do means first let's apply the bg primary here and also mx not mx let's use px padding padding 20 20 is not enough but let's see how it is looking mm, somewhat good but it is not enough let's make it 40 in the mobile view we will adjust it later yeah this is better now uh, i want everything at the center so i'll just use justify center here already we have applied the height property so it will work here you can see here you can see everything is at the center then we just have to add a space between all these things how to use that uh, very simple you just have to use a property called as gap gap uh, let me use 8 gap 8 is nothing but uh, 32 pixels uh, space for every element yes looking good mm, okay 32 is enough and also let's make it 9xl and here uh, 
सेवन एक्सएल एडजस्ट द फॉन्ट साइज नाइन एक्सएल इज टू हाई मेक इट एट हियर एट इज ऑल्सो टू हाई कीप इट सेवन ओनली या कुल सो वी गॉट द टेक्स्ट वी गॉट द पैराग्राफ एंड एवरी थिंग नाउ द थिंग इज वी हैव टू एड वन बटन हियर सो लेट मी एड द बटन बटन नेम विल बी गेट स्टार्टेड ऑब्वियसली गेट स्टार्टेड वी कैन ऑल्सो पुट द एंकर टैग इफ यू वॉन्ट class name so first thing will be border 2 and also border uh tertiary border tertiary and then we'll be having text to white and let me apply uh, px 10 and py 5 so border uh four pix or uh, two pixels border color is tertiary text color is white padding left and right will be uh 40 pixels and padding top and bottom will be 20 pixels yeah we got the button now let's make this uh py3 only py3 and also make it rounded that's all here you can see i got the button make the color also same text tertiary yeah so this looks very clean as like the deployed version itself the only change is in the deployed version we have used the 1 by 3 width but here we are using the full width so if you want to use the 1 by 3 you just have to use class name w 2 by 3 so w2 by 3 is nothing but it will take only 66% so 66% is not enough so let's use uh, w3 by 4 this is also not enough so just make it uh, normal only yeah only for the paragraph you can change it if you want so let's use that uh, property for the paragraph w 2 by 3 yeah this looks clean and also even if you want to make the paragraph color uh, green you can make it so actually this is the color of my country flag so that's the reason i'm keeping it here so here uh, ksr so we don't want these uh ks are to be at this uh, area so i want these things to be at the normal positions only so to do that you just have to keep the header outside of the content so what we can do means in the home we can have the div we can have a div which we can call it as the content and we can have class name this for the div so header uh, will not be disturbed now it will be in the actual position yeah like this so we have completed the intro part now you can see almost same except some margins and paddings we'll adjust this later and the next thing is for every section we are going to have some padding so this is the section right so let me have py10 is it applied or not Okay, let's have M Y ten. Oh, M Y will not look good. So just keep it P Y only. Yeah. So this is about the intro section, guys. So in the next lecture, we are going to work on the about me section. Thank you. Welcome back, guys. In this video, we are going to work on the about me section. already we have completed the intro now we will be working on the about me so from here every section is having the title with followed by one uh, kind of divider here you can see about me and this line here uh, experiences and line projects and line courses and line 
so we can make this section title as the reusable component so let's create the uh, section first about about dot js rfce so let's make this about only go to the index and keep the about about now so you can see uh, where is the about yeah here we got the about we can change the colors so let's go to the components and create a component section title dot js rfce so for this section title we will receive the props title and the title i am going to keep it as the uh yeah so text to 2xl text to tertiary font semi bold and title and also class name is equal to flex i'll keep one more so first let's use this go to the uh about and here just call the section title section title and title will be about you can see i got the about but the color is not white it is normal uh, white color only oh the color is not tertiary it is white color with tertiary border here so to do that what you can write means go to the section title make this as text white and here let's create one more div which will have class name is equal to w hyphen uh w we can call it as uh, 40 pixels w 40 is nothing but 160 pixels and h 1 px h 1 px height 1 pixels and bg tertiary bg tertiary can see i got this uh, divider now i am going to make this uh, flex gap 10 and items center that's all here you can see i got this title and don't make the font semi bold keep it normal about and if possible make it text 3 xl yeah and also use the padding py 10 yep here you can see looking very clean uh increase the let's increase the size of the divider instead of w40 let's make it 60 w60 is nothing but uh, 240 pixels now let's start working on the about content so if you observe in the about we are having this uh, animated image or we can have the normal png image also so no issue in that and uh, this is the animated image in my deployed and also our uh, introduction or anything we can call it as so where you are from what are the technologies you are aware of and what kind of projects you are interested to do all these things so after this we are having the list of technologies that we are aware of so in the about me section only we are going to have our technologies uh, list so let's start building this first uh, i am using the uh, this image from the lotty animations so we can use the animated gifs from the lotty let me explain lotty animation uh so i already logged in with my account so here we can search the animations i'll just search developer so you will be having lot of animations i think we are using this in the deployed yeah so to use that you just need to click on it so there are lot of animations you can choose it anything so i'm choosing this one So first uh, you just have to click on this use animation in html uh then 
uh, to use any lot lot animation not only this first you just have to use this script tag and paste it in the index.html then just copy the element and put it in the about so here i'm going to make it dot flex again i'm going to keep div and i'll add this uh, animation remove the loop as well as the controls and also this is style property and you can have the height for it so i am just adding height is equal to uh, for the div you have to add height is equal to 50 vh i will add 50 vh let's see how it is looking 50 vh something is wrong here let me see what got oh it's 50 vh not 5 vh yeah here you can see it got applied so let's increase the height instead of 50 make it 70 yeah this is fine now uh, right to this we are going to have some paragraph so i have two paragraphs description one and description two so about so already we are having this flex i'm going to make it one more div this will be class flex call flex flex call gap phi and the first one will be description one p dot text white description one and then this is the description two this is the description two copy that's all okay so it looking very awkward let's try to do the magic so for this div we just have given the height property now let's give the width property also width 1 by 2 of the parent still it is not working so for this flex flex i am going to make it w full and w full is nothing but 100% uh make it uh, item center this is fine but why the animation image is small let me check so here also i will make it uh, w1 by 2 for the paragraph div also yeah now this is perfect so let's go to the text uh, here also for paragraph also let's make text white yep so looking good now uh, by this we have completed the first part of the about section the animation as well as the uh, descriptions about ourselves so we can decrease the of paragraph size globally because we are going to use lot of paragraphs and then we will be having the skills uh, list so in the next lecture we will be having the skills list and we'll be working on that thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the skills part of the intro section so let's go to the intro and also copy this text after this flex i am going to have one more div which will have h1 dot text tertiary make it a text to excel text to excel we got this and if possible uh, for this div 
just have the class name uh, py5 yeah so i think text uh, 2xl is not good make it text excel only yeah then uh, we are going to loop through an array so this is the h1 right so here i'll just write the list of skills javascript react node express mongodb uh, i'm not good in python so i'll just make it firebase yeah now uh, we can also use this array at the top anyhow in the second part we will make everything dynamic so i'll just write const skills is equal to this now uh, skills dot map skills dot map for every iteration we are going to return a div Mm, here let me close this perfect yeah so in this div i am going to put h1 uh, the skill name skill name and uh, to make everything side by side we just have to use this in the flex dot flex and if the width is not enough we are going to make it flex wrap yeah so we got this list you can see now let's have the gap gap 10 and also for this uh, h1 make it class name text tertiary tertiary why this is not applying yeah it got applied and then uh, for this uh, flex i'm going to have mt5 and then uh, for this main div i'll have the border class name border border tertiary again border tertiary and p5 and uh, not p5 py3 px5 like this javascript react node express mongodb and firebase so you can use different style if you want let's make it px10 yeah so looking very clean you can see so by this we have completed the first two sections of our portfolio but the sections and the code what we have written will work only in the desktop view so if you open this it will look very awkward in the mobile view and we cannot even understand what is there so in the next lecture and in the next section the complete section we will be focusing on the responsiveness and after that whatever the sections we build uh, at the same time we will build both in the desktop version as well as the mobile version now we have two sections to play with the responsive classes that's the reason i have designed the first two, two uh, sections without any responsive so in the next section we will make these two sections responsive and whatever the sections that we will build after that we are going to make it responsive on the fly itself thank you welcome back guys in this section we are going to work on the responsiveness of the first two, two sections so already we have completed two sections the first one will be the intro section and the second one is uh, about section so if you open these two sections in the mobile view it will look very odd because the classes and the styling that we have already written is uh, considered and based on the web view not for the mobile view so now we are going to write some media queries using the tailwind css and we will be making it responsive first of all let me show you how these two sections look in the deployed version here you can see how clean it is looking in the deployed version so we are going to make like this so first of all uh, to work on the responsiveness in the tailwind css we have to use the tailwind breakpoints so let me show you what are the bre tailwind breakpoints tailwind breakpoints 
customizing screens here you can see if you type tailwind breakpoints in the google you will get this uh, website so customizing screens so based on the screen width we are going to have some uh, variable or we can have some flag for that uh, screen size and based on that screen size we can write different different styling so let me go to the uh, maximum range so if you scroll down here you will be having the max width breakpoints so if you see uh, here up to 639 they called it as sm up to 767 they called it as md up to 1023 they called it as lg and like this we can have different different breakpoints based on our screen resolution and sizes so what you have to do means first you just have to copy this screens object not the theme you just have to copy the screens object copy and paste it in the tailwind.config.js after the colors not colors after the extend yeah screens so now uh, we are not going to have these many screens so let's uh, have only two web view and mobile view so based on that uh, coding you can write your own uh, tablet view media queries so i am going to explain you only web view and mobile view yeah so here what i am going to make it i'll remove this excel and i'll also remove this md md is nothing but the tablet devices mostly we will use the md tag for the uh, tab views so just get rid of these comments yeah so now uh, let me explain what these are going to perform so here we have sm that means small devices max width is equal to 639 so up to 639 pixel resolution devices we are going to write styling using this sm word or else we are going to write it normally that means large devices so here you can make it 2000 so from 639 to 2000 and whatever it may be you can make it 3000 or anything so if the device width is less than 639 we are going to consider it as the mobile devices so now let me go and write the media query for that yeah so we are having this text right uh the main title of the developer now i am going to make it somewhat smaller in the mobile view how to do that it's very simple go to the intro.js yeah so by default we are applying text 7xl that means it will be for the lg if you are not applying any breakpoint it will be applied for the web view now here i am going to write for sm that means for smaller devices i am going to write text hyphen 3xl that's all for normal devices it will be text 7xl for smaller devices it will be text 3xl here you can see max width 639 so in the devices the font size will be 30 pixels now let's see the output ones i'll open in the mobile view mm okay uh, we need to decrease everything then only we could able to see that so even for the bottom one also i will do the same thing sm text 3xl yeah here you can see the text size got decreased but here we have to do one more change if you observe it is not taking the complete width because for the content we have given uh, padding 40 in the both sides if you go to the home uh, where is it index.js here you can see px40 we have given but actually we need px40 in only web view not in the mobile view so i'll just write in the mobile view i want px5 that's all now let's open here you can see now everything is looking good so if it crosses the 639 it is uh, going to perform as the web view you can see if it reaches the 639 it will be performed as the mobile view that means smaller devices now the intro section is completed we can view in the mobile view and also web view now let's come to the about 
so in the about we have to change only one thing so we placed the image as well as the description of the developer side by side in the web view but in the mobile view i want uh image at the top and bottom i want these two descriptions description one and description two let's go to the about yeah so this is the flex in the normal devices it will be flex and in the sm devices it will be flex call so one by one flex call now let's see that's all here you can see we got this if it reaches the more than 600 it is going to perform as the top view here also the styling is disrupting but we are not concentrating on the tab view we will be concentrating only on the mobile view and web view so let me cross check everything in the mobile view now so here we are getting this uh, space i don't know why mm, maybe we might have written w1 by 2 in the web view we are going to make it w full in the mobile view yeah so here we can see we are having this w1 by 2 so i am going to make it w full in the sm in the smaller devices i am going to make it w full and here also for smaller devices i am going to make it w full that's all superb here you can see looking very clean yeah nothing is getting broken everything is looking clean so even in the tab view also you want to have the same look as mobile you can increase the maximum resolution of the mobile so let me show you that also so for the tab and mobile we will use the same resolutions so you won't get any issues uh, where is it tailwind.config.js yeah so instead of 639 let me use 1000 so up to 1000 i am considering as the smaller then i am considering as the larger so we'll have only two yeah this is the tab even in the tab also we'll have the look like web only ah uh, not web as the mobile only you can see so once it reaches the 1000 pixels it is going to convert as the web yeah now it uh, reached the 1000 pixel it is behaving as the web so nothing got broken everything is looking clean superb so this is about the tailwind responsiveness so from the next section we are going to make the responsiveness of the every section while writing the normal code only we are not going to have a separate lecture about the responsiveness for every section so this this lecture is especially for the responsiveness but we, we are not going to have any lectures about the responsiveness we will write directly so that's all guys in the next video we will be starting experiences thank you welcome back guys in this section we are going to work on the experiences module so let me show you how we are going to handle the experiences so this is the production version so i'm scrolling here so after the skills we are going to show our experiences so it is very simple uh, first at the left side we are going to have the period so from 2018 to 19 so this is the company and this is the role and this is some description so here for the time being we are using the lorem ipsum content so based on your experience you have to add some description about your work that means where you have worked how was the work what kind of projects you have developed in that period like that so 2018 to 19 22 present 21 to present so at the left side we are going to have the main things about the experiences so we can have this as the uh, titles also but uh, the better ux will be having the periods so it is very easy to understand so in from 2018 to 19 i've done these things from 2020 to present i've done this 21 to present i'm doing this like that so we are going to build everything from scratch so let's start working on this 
so first of all uh, right now we don't have any back end for this so after making this portfolio dynamic dynamic we are going to get everything from the back end only that means these experiences data projects data and also courses data so these three modules are identical so we are going to build uh, the experiences module very slowly i'm going to explain each and everything and then we will replicate these experiences with the projects so let's start building so first of all i will give some sample data to work with so here you can see i have three experiences this is my data only so this is an array so based on this data only we are going to design this screen so i've just copied that uh, in the client uh, let me have a folder resources so after making this dynamic we are going to delete it for the time being just have resources let's keep this inside the src so resources first i am going to create experiences experiences dot js now i'll just write export const experiences is equal to this array that's all so this is the structure so this is the id we don't bother about this id then we'll be having the company role role is nothing but the title period and also description as i said right now i don't have any description so i will use the lorem ipsum content so here in the description you have to specify what you did in this company in this period from 2021 to present like that so here company name is the shaytech and i did as the react developer role so in the description you have to add some uh, content like what kind of what kind of projects you have worked and what kind of tools we have used in that uh, period like that so let's start building this uh, go to the pages home uh, experiences experiences dot js yeah so let's have functional component rfce and then we will be having the section title uh, section title what is the component name yeah section title only okay it's not giving me the snippet just copy yeah section title this should be experiences or you can call it as experience now let's go to the mm, index.js and after the about let's have experiences section title is not defined let's import that okay so here you can see i got experience now just observe the design very carefully so we have to make this as the flex in the first part we are going to have the periods so based on the selected period we are going to show the content so instead of explaining everything here let me write the code you will understand better so i'm going to have a flex dot flex so in this let me import the experiences first so this is the experiences data now in this flex we are going to have two parts the first part will be displaying the periods second part will be displaying the content of the selected period you understand right so this is the first part displaying the periods second part will be displaying the content of the selected period so if i select 2018 to 19 it will be freelancer 20 web development instructor 21 react developer like that so now let's handle the first part so just write experiences dot map so for every iteration we are going to return it div let's close this perfectly yeah now uh, just have h1 dot uh, text mm, excel or to excel anything dot 
text uh, white initially text white and this should be experience dot period experience dot period here you can see I got this now let's go to this div and have the padding as here class name flex flex call and have gap is equal to 5 now you will have some gap here you can see then what you have to do means have some padding for this div class name is equal to p5 mm. ok p5 good now the next thing will be we have to know what is the active period so for that what we can do means uh, let's go to the above written part and create one state variable const selected item set selected item is equal to null initially or else we can call it as the selected item we can store the index selected item index set selected item index initially it will be zero now if the selected item index matches with this div we are going to have some different styling or also we can have styling for the direct h1 uh, no worries in that so let's have directly for the h1 so i'm just writing the template literals yeah so here by default it will be text white or we will write the condition directly if selected index selected item index equal to equal to current index current index will be present here index matches with the current index we are going to have some different styling else we are going to have other styling so for the time being just write if it matches I am just writing text tertiary text tertiary else I am going to write text white and also if it matches I am going to write border tertiary tertiary uh, don't require rounded so let's have like this only here just get rid of the padding we don't need this yeah let's see the output once here you can see by default 2021 present got selected now we need to write the on click whenever this got clicked we are going to make the set selected item index is equal to this index so for div just have on click you can write the on click for the div as well as the uh, h1 you can do anything and also make this cursor pointer for the div class name cursor pointer yeah now I'm going to click on this 2020 present so color got shifted like this so first let me apply some padding to the main div py10 yeah so like this no still it is not completed yet so here you can see for the div we are having this border which div it is nothing but this parent div this one so if it matches we are going to have the border left for the selected so first let's have some sample border border l 2 border left so let's have 2 pixel later we are going to change it and we need to give the color 
so we we will give the sampur color as border uh let me write some color code so i'll use the green kind of thing only with some decreased opacity yeah let's see the output once so you can see i got this border now let's have uh what we can do here for the h1 uh, yeah, whether it is uh, selected or not it doesn't matter we will give normal padding so already we have this right text for excel so these are the normal things and these are the selected so i just write padding px 5 or we can write px 10 now we will get some padding yeah here you can see now the thing is uh, we have to highlight this border also here we just need to uh, highlight this so for that what you can do means border tertiary you have right now what you can do you just need to write yeah so border tertiary and also border l 4 that's all so we got this now we just need to apply some negative margin to make it center so minus ml 2 ml 2 is too high let's apply ml 1 that's enough you can see you can also adjust the normal uh, uh margin also let's have 2 pixel mm, or else 3 as i said only for the experiences we are going to write uh, this much uh, styling and this much slow so for the projects and courses i am going to replicate this that's the reason i am taking some time yeah now this is perfect as like the deployed yeah now uh, let's have some more gap between 1 and 1 so here instead of gap 5 let's have gap 10 so it will look good like this superb now we are almost uh, close the next thing is we need to have the background color for the selected it is also similar uh, to the tertiary color only but some decreased opacity so here only for the h1 i am going to write bg i am writing the color code first i will write 000 and then i am going to write uh, i'll pick here decreased opacity that's all almost good uh let's compare with the deployed mm, let's increase the opacity some more yeah this is better and now let's apply py3 that's all almost uh similar to the deployed you can see this is the deployed and this is the current so we can easily observe which one is selected so now based on the selected we are going to show the content here that we will continue in the next lecture thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the content of the selected item in the experience so we already know the index and we already have the experiences data so based on that we are going to show the content here so first of all uh, we are going to show the title of the role in the orange color that means our text secondary then we are going to show the uh, company name with the text tertiary then we will show the description in the text uh, what it is white color so let's go and do that after this div we already have this empty div right here put one h1 text with dot text secondary text secondary dot text to excel so it should be experience oh experiences experiences of uh, selected item index that's all i got an error oh we need to write the property 
dot title yeah so here you can see i got react developer i got web development instructor i got freelancer so it is working fine now we just need to work on the content so let's have this so first make it make this as the flex flex call gap uh, phi or 10 anything you can give so this one also i'll make our uh, text excel only and just copy this and put it here so this should be text uh, tertiary text tertiary and here this should be company so role company and uh, in the paragraph i am going to use the lorem ipsum lorem ipsum is nothing but the description so right now i don't have any description so that's the reason i'm just keeping the lorem ipsum so you should not use the lorem ipsum in your own portfolios you have to add your original content class name text white that's all can see everything is working fine now so we have to work on the styling if you see we have this empty space because we should not get these uh, cut things so it should take the complete width so for that you can do one thing so this is the flex two parts this is the first part this is the second part so in the web view what i'm going to do means i'll make this w uh one by three one by three yeah and here for this flex i am going to have gap 10 like this can see looking very clean and neat so we don't need this gap also here so this is perfect actually yeah and you can also increase the gap if you want so let's make it 20 so you will get some more gap yeah this is better now if you open this in the mobile view you will get irritation on yourself only so let's see wow <laughs> somewhat looking good actually but uh, this is not the right way so we have to use these uh, uh, kind of tabs in the horizontal way not in the vertical things so let's do that so in the mobile view i want this at the top 2021 2020 2018 like that for that you just have to do one thing already we have this w1 by 3 right so just here make this sm flex row and also sm overflow x scroll if the if we have more number of uh, experiences we, we have to scroll it in the mobile view and also we want w full in the mobile view sm w full that's all now let's open in the mobile view mm, something got broken uh, let's see what got broken sm flex row oh not here actually so this should be at the top yeah okay okay i think sorry for the mistake so this should be flex row only here we have to make the flex call yeah sorry guys flex call because in the mobile view we want the periods and the content uh, one by one first we should have top we should have the tabs then we should have the content as like vs code but in the web, web view we will have tabs here content here like that now let's see it should work good superb you can see like this of course we will change these scrollers don't worry about this okay uh, why don't worry so let's work on now itself so let's uh uh what we have to do first first we have to get rid of this scroll color and all those things it looks very odd and also in the web view we should have the uh width width should be bigger not like this so let's have uh 
if i scroll this mm, we have this content this is the h1 so i'll just write sm w full so it's not applying so let's have smw let's uh, have the normal width uh, 40 it's not working let me cross check why okay inspect and see so this is the flex let's keep everything side by side and inspect yeah this is the flex and here we have this content cursor pointer so let's have width is equal to uh, not working not working not working so for this flex only we have to add flex direction row and flex wrap flex wrap nothing is working wrap wrap reverse no let's try one other property oh i think in the deployed version also we are we have the same thing so we are confusing just so we just need to adjust the scroller that's all the color and uh, look and feel is same yeah sorry for the confusion again so let's work on the scroller first so it's very easy to change and update the scroller things in the web so just open google just open google and type uh, scroll bar uh, color change css so custom scroll bar so just click on this try yourself and copy everything from here copy everything from here i'll explain and go to the index.css paste it here so i'll explain each and every line first let's see the output what what changes we got we can see we got very odd look first thing is we need to change this red color then we need to change this white color so wherever there is red we are going to make the similar color of this our uh, primary with some decreased opacity so let's do that first so this is red color so let's go to our color scenes with some decreased opacity yeah i just clicked on this so copy and here also paste the same thing now let's see it's somewhat looking good and we need to decrease this width we don't need this much we need somewhat smaller so here you have to change it web scroll bar width make it 8 pixels that's all looking very clean now we need to change this uh, white color also this should be normal our theme color so this is the color uh, box shadow we can remove this actually uh, where we okay keep this web scroll bar uh, track here mm, background background color so let's copy our theme color go to the tailwind.config.js this is our primary copy this and put it here that's all can see and also we can have this uh, get rid of box shadow and border radius we'll just have the background i think we are good we don't need this thumb hover property also yeah you can see now it's very clean and neat let's open this in the mobile view now can see we don't even have the scroll bar because we don't have the scrollable content we just have the three if we have more we will having b we will having the scrollable so here we have this overflow why i why i think so let's get rid of this 
only overflow scroll we want only overflow x scroll not y scroll let's see what we have given yeah so we have given scroll overflow scroll it should be only x scroll not y now i think that space will be gone yep superb very clean and neat that's it guys this is about the experiences you can see it's working properly in every area even in the mobile view we can directly switch so in the projects and courses we will be having some extra content that means we will be having around 6 to 7 projects you can see you will get a scroller like this where is it yeah you can have scroller like this this is the advantage of having in the mobile view even in the deployed version also for experiences we don't have so we are not doing anything wrong so we are doing as per the production version only so that's all guys this is about the experiences so in the next video we will be working on the projects thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the projects section so let me show you what we are having project section in the production version so here you can see after the experiences we are going to have the similar kind of styling for the projects also so at the left side we are going to show the project title and at the right side we are going to show some image as well as some description as well as the title in the orange color in about the project so it's almost similar to uh, experiences only but the only thing we have extra here is image project image so in the experiences also if you have uh, images you can have uh, keep it but mostly we don't have uh, images for the experiences so that's the reason I just uh, added with only title company and description so here for the projects anyhow we will have the project logo or any dis uh, image about the project so we can have it here so we can replicate this uh, uh, experiences uh, code and we can uh, make some changes to build these projects as well as the courses uh, modules or sections. So I have already added my static data in the resources. Uh, here you can see projects.js as well as the courses.js. So you, even if you don't have any data also don't worry I will provide in my GitHub link. So you can uh, take it from here and you can add it to your project. So let's go and replicate the uh, experiences section. So this is the experiences, right? Uh, create a similar kind of component called as the projects dot js RFCE instead of oh uh, yeah. So let's have projects only. Here I'm going to have the section title. Section title will be projects. Now uh, go to the experiences or experiences code, copy everything from here. First let's see the output, whether we got the projects or not. Oh, we have to add it in the home. Oh, not, not this. projects now we should get it yeah here you can see we got the projects now let's copy the experiences code copy this paste it in the projects so first we will get some errors so you have to uh, remove that you need to copy this paste it here for the selected item and also uh, experiences data yeah now let's see okay so even though it is projects we have replicated the code that's the reason we got the projects data now we need to modify and change it to projects data like this so if you observe the project uh, data we will be having some different kind of properties first one will be project title we are going to show the project title for the clickable purpose that means if you click on the project title at the right side we are going to show some details about that project so as like the uh, experience we are going to have some description and also an image and then if you want to show the technologies used in that project you are all you can also show the technologies so here i have used an array where you can put the technologies 
and also if you want to have a demo link for the user to navigate to your project you can have the link so i am given all the options which are required for the normal portfolios so based on your requirement you can add some more or you can keep uh, you can remove from these also so that's up to you but uh, these are the normal things so we got the properties right now let's try to change them go to the projects here uh, first and foremost thing we have to change here is instead of experiences make it projects projects data yeah so here also projects while looping here also project then if you go to the uh, left side uh, tabs instead of period we are going to show the title project title it's not experience it's project project dot title here first we are going to show the title then we are going to uh, show the title technologies what we are having data okay first let's show title and description so we don't need this company remove this so description is nothing but the lorem ipsum let's keep it as it is so experiences is not different so instead of experiences make it projects yeah now let's see we should get some content awesome so here you can see we got the projects and it is changing successfully like this now in the deployed version we have some more content we are having the our description as well as i have added some lorem ipsum content let's do it same so p dot text white it should be project dot description project dot description oh it's projects of selected item dot description yeah so now you can see here also we are having the actual uh, paragraph actual uh, description about our um, uh, project as well as some lorem ipsum content so once again i'm telling you should not use the lorem ipsum content in your projects so you have to use your own content then only the recruiters or the clients will notice okay now uh, we need to add one image also if you see we are having this image then we are having the uh, uh, title and description so let's go to what is this uh, yeah okay so we are done with this now so here we are having flex flex call right so we have to keep this as it is but right to this not right to this left to this we need to have an image so i need to have one more div we should have class flex class flex and in the first part we are going to have the image and second part is as it is the text related part so src uh, it should be projects of projects of selected item index dot image so for this uh, let's have some height and width you can add height and width using the tailwind as well as the normal height and width attributes so here i'm just making 40 oh h62 i'm not sure whether 62 is having in the tailwind or not it's not having h62 240 pixels uh height oh width we are going to increase 72 let's see the output yeah so we got this now we are going to have some styling for this flex let's have item center and also uh, justify center and also gap 10 perfect you can see it's looking clean and neat 
so this is a pizza delivery application this is the e-commerce application uh, room booking application car rental application job portal as well as social media so this is about the projects now let's try to uh, look this in the uh, responsive view so we need to change change some uh, classes again i believe so this is fine so we can scroll it and we can have it so here you can see instead of flex row we have to make it flex column in the web view or not web view mobile view let's keep the like this only so here i'm just writing sm flex call so it will be one by one image will be at the top and the text related part will be at the bottom like this you can see like this way you can have it yeah now uh, we can replicate the same thing for the courses also but we are going to do that in the next lecture thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the courses section so we already replicated the experience with the projects now we are going to replicate projects with the courses it is also uh, similar so if you observe the courses data title of the course image as well as the navigate link that's all and also description if required so let's go to the uh, home and create a new a component or section whatever you call it courses dot js so copy the projects put it in the courses find projects wherever there is projects make it courses and here also instead of projects make it courses replicate good 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 uh here also instead of projects make it courses i'm going to make project as course awesome so you can see it is course dot title at the left side and at the right side we will be having image as like our data and also course title and also and uh, uh, paragraph so here the text i am going to change is uh, this description i think we don't have the description in the courses uh, static data so let's remove this only have the lorem ipsum content so while working on the dynamic part we are going to have it so let's see oh we have not added the courses in the home where is home 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 about index yeah so after the projects let's have courses that's all projects is not defined okay where oh here its courses still one more place we are having line number 12 here also courses yeah i think we are good let's see yeah super we got this here you can see react development course node js course everything is looking clean and neat now let's style this a uh, little bit first thing is uh, we need full width for the titles you can see i want full width so for that uh, you can do one thing hmm you can decrease the uh, font size of this text so already we are having text excel this is not bigger okay uh, let's have this image right side because for the projects we have the image left side and uh, description right side and i'm going to uh, swap the uh, courses for courses i'm going to have uh, description first and the image next you can see so here uh, by this we can have some differentiation now let's increase the width of the image 
instead of 92 we can have instead of 72 we can have it 82 i'm not sure whether we have 82 or not let's have 80 yeah we have 80 yeah this is somewhat better or else we can decrease the height instead of 60 let's make it 52 hmm this is much better okay now uh coming to the point we should have this uh, full width or if you want to keep it like this you can keep it so there is nothing wrong in it so let's go to the mobile view okay working fine here also only issue is we should decrease this uh, scroll bar width in the mobile view uh, it's looking odd let's see uh, whether we can do that or not scroll bar make it six mm, somewhat better so let's keep like this only let's expand okay and one more thing is we have to change this about uh, that means section title color it's not looking good because you can see uh, here about so there is nothing uh, there's no problem here because we don't have any text bottom of the about but if you here if you observe experience again we are having the text as the white color so it is little disturbing so let's go to the section title uh, there is section title components section title so here instead of text white just make it text secondary yeah now looking clean so we can have some uh, highlight about the section yeah cool so i think we are good that's all guys this is about the courses so in the next video we will be working on say hello that means contact section thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the say hello uh, section so here we are going to have our details instead of taking the client details or the user details from the portfolio we will provide our details so if they are interested they will contact so we are providing as a developer format so because uh, we should not uh, have our details one by one like that so everyone can do that so they have to understand we have a, we are a developer so that's the reason we are going to put it as an object so name age gender email mobile country so these are the details i am giving in my portfolio so based on your requirement based on your profession you have to give and at the right side we are going to have some simple contact image that's all so go to the uh, contact section let's create that contact dot js rfce so now uh, here first i am going to create an user object const user is equal to so name I'll just write my name gosh ready dot k then uh, I'm going to write my email gmail.com why i'm writing all these things i can copyright <laughs> sorry yeah just copy these things yeah so now uh, again we are going to have the section title so the section title will be say hello section title will be title say hello okay let's have like this and add it in the home where is home here after courses we'll be having uh, what it is contact that's all yeah 
you can see we got this uh, say hello now the thing is uh, we have to uh, render the object that means we have to show object structure so it's somewhat difficult but let's try to do that okay so i'll show you the simplest format we are having two different uh, options to do that so first i'm going to do the normal and manual format so go to the contact so first let's uh, divide these into flex then uh, what we can do means uh, first part will be uh, object so i'm just writing an h1 text with open uh, that means uh, curly brace so i think the normal curly brace may not work let's see yeah like this you can render i believe okay let's have class name text white so we have some pre call method in the html but before that let's try to do this or else we can go with that yeah we got the object and then we are going to have object dot key dot user dot map for every iteration we are going to render an h1 text not like this yeah we got already so but we got text tertiary it should be text white here also text white so first we are going to show the key key is nothing but name value is user of key is nothing but the value like this and then we need to close the bracket that's all i think we got the object let's see mm something is missing here let's see okay got it so just copy all this put it inside the dot flex dot flex call like this now let's see awesome right so here we should have a colon so I, i'm not sure why we are not getting this uh, single colon only for name we are not getting mm instead of here just have it here itself yeah now it is fine now we can have the styling or alignment or anything you can use so just use uh, this is the text to white right or else here we can have class name text uh nothing required just have gap gap 1 yeah looking good but if you want to move these properties to the right side for this uh, uh h1 just have class name ml phi like this you can see you got the beautiful object as like the deployed version but the color and the text sizes are small we are going to change it so let's have uh text white and text uh, md md is already we have uh, sm yeah sm is fine so just have text sm everywhere here also text text sm and here also that's all or else if you want to maintain the same structure uh, everywhere just have it md only let's have md only we can have the consistency because anyhow this is the uh, normal h1 text or let's have the paragraph just have these like the paragraph it would be better 
so if you want to change the paragraph uh, size we can have that in the index.html we can change it in a single line index.css not index.html p here also p and here also p that's all yeah now this is cool okay the first part is done now the second part will be oh we forgot the color it should be text uh, not white it should be tertiary replace it yeah and the second part is having an image so this image uh, we have to get it from the undraw so uh, even i'm not getting from the deployed version itself let's say let's see whether we can get it or not oh so this is an svg image so we could not get this so let me uh, ch uh check in the undraw or else uh, already we have added an animation from the lotty so let's go from that lotty animation so oh i need to log in again hmm oh i came to different site sorry yeah this is the one okay so i'll just search contact contact us think we'll get the animation in the first itself yeah this one copy go to the html and copy the lotty player and paste it in the second part of the flex here and make sure it should be inside a div not directly because we cannot apply the height and width for that only for the parent element we have to apply the height and width remove the controls remove the loop remove the style okay so here i am going to have class name is equal to h96 uh or else uh h500 i am writing h500 px this is enough and for the sm we are going to have this as flex call that's all think we are good let's see yeah we got the contact let's have the item center items center mm we can decrease this height make it 400 yeah okay and also justify between hmm now this is fine so this is the contact object and this is the image so now we are done with the contact us section also so here also no problem everything is looking good in the mobile view also so in the next video we will be working on the footer thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the footer so this is very simple com uh, component we are not going to make it complex so we'll just have two parts not two parts two titles designed and developed by and developer name footer.js rfce so go to the home uh add the footer yeah we got this footer you can see first we are having this uh, uh underline okay so go to the footer 
so just create an empty div just create an empty div for this class name will be uh, h1 w full and uh, uh, bg gray uh, 300 let's see okay first i am going to have this class name py10 yeah so we got this divider but we don't need h1 we need h1px not h1 class 1px okay even h1px also looking odd mm here it is looking good mm what is the issue i think maybe the color make it uh, bg gray 700 yeah this is better now okay now we are going to have the designed and developed by and developer name so just have div class name flex item center justify center and we need to have an h1 text with the dot text white text white so i already got my name but before this we should have one more h1 h1 dot text white uh designed and uh, developed by designed and developed by let's see i got like this so it should be flex call awesome so we need to have some mt 10 cool so i want these also in the white color only i don't want uh, text tertiary yeah that's all so let's decrease the opacity of this section opacity 70 yep cool so this is about the uh normal portfolio so still we are not yet done with the front end so we have two different and complex things the first one will be the cider where we have the contact social media links as well as the loader so here you can see this is also the complex thing so whenever the api request is in the processing state we should show the loader with blinking text of your name or you can also show the lo logo so that's the secondary first we should build this cider so in the next video we'll be working on the slider not slider cider thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the left cider of our monstrak portfolio application here you can see this is the deployed version at the left side you will be having the list of social icons that means if anyone want to contact through our social media using facebook mail or instagram or linkedin or github they just need to click on this link here we have to specify the our uh, respective social media link in this anchor tag so then they will be navigated to our social media profile and this will be placed at the left side only in the web view coming to the mobile view we are going to choose other position because we don't we won't be having enough space in the mobile view to place it in the uh, left side so let me show you here you can see in the left side we won't be having in the mobile view so it will be only for the web view so let's start designing this before that for the icons we will we will be using the remix icons uh, cdn library so we need not to install any npm package we just need to use the cdn uh, link so the library name will be remix icons we can choose anything but uh, here we can add the icons using just the i tag that is the advantage okay so if you click on get started you can see the cdn link yeah this is the cdn link copy and go to the index.html and paste it here that's all now uh, let's go to the code 
so in the code i am going to create a new component called as uh, instead of components let's add it in the uh, home only because that uh, social media cider section will be in the home page only not in the admin panel so here we can have it in the uh, home so i just write the component name as left sider left sider dot js rfce so here first and foremost thing we have to do is we have to make this uh, position fixed and it should be at the left bottom in this area so let's add this first in the home page go to the home so you can add it anywhere because anyhow it will be absolute position only so let's add it here left sider yeah let's see the output once where is it i didn't got any output let me refresh yeah now i can able to see the left sider so first uh, let's design the component then we will change the position to here so the component should look like this uh, vertical icon so all so if you go to the uh, icons first we are having a facebook icon so let's search for the facebook here you can see we are having different uh, facebook icons you can copy anything so i'll copy this one circular copy and go to the left side bar remove this and add one more div which will have dot flex dot flex call put it here and let's see the output once just make color text gray uh, 400 you can see i got the icon so let's increase the font size uh, text excel yes looking good now uh, we have to copy the remaining icons so we will just copy the class names will you anyhow we will use the same styling right so let's keep it uh, sorry replicate five times yeah we got five icons now let's search for the mail mail icon so copy this class name and put it here then you will be having instagram instagram copy ri instagram line and put it here okay the next one will be linkedin same uh, this one linkedin box line and the last one will be uh, github so i'll just use uh, direct ri github line it should work maybe git hub yeah so we got all the icons facebook mail instagram linkedin and github so let's add some space so we are having this flex right have uh, gap 3 gap 3 yeah now uh, here uh, bottom of the github we are having the divider so now let's add the divider so div so class name w 1px uh, height h 52 yeah 
so the color would be uh, bag bg so first i'll make it uh, black and then we will choose the color from the picker only i'll choose similar blue color yeah here you can see i got this now we have to make it align center so to do that you need to have one more flex dot flex and it should be a flex call flex call and uh, uh, items center items center now this is perfect so you need not worry about this position anyhow we are going to bring it here so now for this main view just have class name position fixed left zero left zero and bottom zero now let's see the output you can see the position got changed and it is successful now it is very simple you just need to have some padding px 10 that's all so this is always fixed as like the deployed but uh, let's decrease the font weight not font weight make it a uh, text gray uh, 500 sorry text gray 500 or 600 let's make it 600 so it will look dark something is went wrong text gray 600 text is not defined where line number 27 okay let's have con oh it got here yeah <laughs> yes somewhat perfect think we are good so we just need to write the anchor tags and uh, uh, refer links for this to make it uh, work so that's all about the sidebar so let's have some more styling uh, first thing is uh, remove these text excel ones we'll see how it looks good okay this is better and also this divider i'm going to make it just 32 yeah this is also good and looking far enough yeah that's all guys this is about the social media icons so you can choose any icons not only this we have lot of icons for one uh, uh, social media here you can see linkedin linkedin we have lot of things so you can choose any one and we just need to have the anchor tag for this uh, or else if we, if we have more number of similar uh, kind of styling you can write it in the index also index.css you have the choice also so for anchor tag we are going to for i let me write cursor pointer cursor pointer and on on high hover so I hover make it text white you can see it is working also you can increase the size on high over font size make it 20 pixels like this okay it is disturbing remove this yeah this is enough so if you want to add the anchor tag that will also i will show so you can add it uh, in your portfolios so this is the anchor tag right i tag right so here uh, you just need to have an anchor tag so it should navigate to some uh, i'll copy a google website 
I'll put it here. That's all. Let's see. Mm, it's not navigating. Let me refresh. Okay, okay, got it. So you have to paste this i in the anchor tag. So not anchor tag in the i. So first let's have a, then let's have i. Yeah, now it should work. You can see it is navigating perfectly. So that's all guys. This is about the cider. So we have to make one more change. So here you can see in the mobile view, we have to hide it. So you just need to write SM uh, hidden. That's all. Or else you have one more choice. You can keep it here if you want. So let me show you how we can do that. So you have to write lot of styling for that. So let me show you if you want, you can else you can ignore it. First thing is uh, you have to make this uh, uh, position fixed only in the web view. So in the mobile view, let me write SM inherit or position static sm static so it will be at the bottom now in the mobile view oh i think we have written hidden let's remove this yeah now it is at the bottom right then uh, you have to change this uh, flex so in the web view we need flex call but in the mobile view we need flex row sm flex row flex row so let's see that's all and we need to hide this anchor tag not anchor tag divider sm hidden perfect that's all here you can see we got the icons so that's all guys this is about the cider in the next lecture we'll be working on the loader thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the loader component in our monstack portfolio application so let me explain you what is the purpose of the loader component so as we are building a full stack and dynamic portfolio application we may have the api calls even for this page also we are going to have the api call because after making it dynamic we are going to get the data from the node.js and mongodb so while we are getting the data sometimes we may uh, we may what it is called so we may have to wait for some seconds like one or two seconds so in that time instead of showing the empty page you have to show some loader so which is having your name or logo or loading text or any spinner kind of thing so here let me show you what i have done in the production version so my short form is ksr so i have used this text with the animation for my loader component you can see like this ksr so whenever k is highlighted sr will be low opacity whenever s is highlighted kr will be low opacity like that so after writing the code you will understand better so not only this you can choose something like a spinner kind of thing or any circular thing or normal loading text anything so to make it uh, look beautiful i have used my name only in the loader component that's all so now uh, let's go and build the loader component so in the components i am going to have loader dot js so first i'm going to have rfce and here let's have uh, a div with the class name flex and uh, gap phi text 3xl yeah so I'm not writing the color for the div because every text is having different different color. So H1. So for first letter of my name, I'm going to have 
text uh, secondary text secondary the word will be k similarly i am just copying this oh sorry this will be white and the letter will be yes the first letter of my middle name and the last one will be first letter of my last name r and the color would be text uh it should be tertiary that's all now uh this complete ksr text should be horizontally centered as well as the vertically centered in the page so first i am going to write class name h screen height should be screen flex item center and also justify center and these uh loader component should be on top of all the elements so we are going to have fixed position and it should be inset zero that means top zero bottom zero left zero right zero it has to take the complete width and height inset zero you can see if i hover on this everything will be zero pixels now let's go and add it in the app.js before that uh, we have to know when we should show the loader component so after making this application dynamic we can use the reduce and all these things so right now i'm just creating the normal use state hook const show loading show loading hide loading or a set set show loading so in the browser writer i'm going to write the condition so if show loading is equal to true i am going to show the loader else i am going to show null so here we have to import use state hook and also this loader component that's all let's see now refresh mm okay here you can see we got the text we need to add the background color for this loader just add bg primary awesome so now we got the text so let's make the uh, text size for excel and also font semi bold yeah this is looking good now we need to apply the animation so let me explain how the animation should work so first i am going to highlight the k so s and r should be some decreased opacity then after few seconds not few seconds few milliseconds i am going to decrease the opacity of the k and r i am going to highlight yes then after i am going to decrease the opacity of k and s then i am going to highlight the r so like this way it is going to work so let me write the code then you will understand better so for this you just need to apply the class names so for k i am going to apply the class name as k for s it will be s obviously for r it will be r so we cannot write all these uh, complex animation in the tailwind css so let me use the index.css so here i'll write uh, the comment loader animation loader animation so first i am going to write dot k so dot k animation k so the animation name will be k and it will run one second and it should be loop infinite now let's define animation okay i already got the snippet so keyframes k so that means i am writing animation code for k so i want to divide the animation into two uh, three parts 0% 50% and 100% because we have three letters yeah so here just remove all these properties so in 0% i am going to make opacity uh 100 not 100 opacity 1 it will be from 0 to 1 in 50% i am going to make it 0.5 and even in 100% also i am going to make it 0.5 now let's see how it should work so once it will highlight then it will take some time then again it will highlight you can see like this so whenever this is uh, going to decrease the opacity we have to highlight yes like that 
so let me copy this code and replace it for the yes here also yes so s will be highlighted whenever k is having 0.5 so here i am going to make it 1 and here i am going to make it 0.5 here also yes then i am going to write animation for the r so it's little difficult to understand try to uh, listen very carefully r here also r here also r when r should be highlighted at 100 percent level one here 0 0.5 now let me explain this so it will start from here so s will be highlighted at 0% 1 uh, okay sorry k will be highlighted at 0% opacity 1 and remaining at 50% and at 100% it will be 0 0.5 and coming to the s it will be highlighted at 50% coming to the r it will be highlighted at 100% so for one moment only one letter should be highlighted remaining two letters should be having the decreased opacity let's see the output we can see like this so this is the animation so if you if i increase the font weight or font size you will understand better you can see like this so in mobile view i am going to decrease it and web view i am going to keep it as it is text 6xl and in the sm i am going to make it text 3xl that's all now we should not show this animation completely like this so whenever we got the data from the api or whenever the api request is done we are going to hide it so for the understanding purpose i made the show loading true so once we implement the dynamic concepts that means monstack concepts we are going to make this loader in the red user that means we are going to get the value of this uh, show loading from the red user itself so then we can uh, change this to dynamic so for the time being just make it false now we have the component ready and we know when to show that that's all now it is normal so by this we have completed the first part of our code including all the headers footers sidebars animations as well as the responsiveness so in the next lecture in the uh, we will be starting the dynamic part that means back end part thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to start the second part of our course which is nothing but the making the first part dynamic so in the first part we made the normal portfolio where we build everything from the static thing that means we have the data in our code base only now we are going to get each and every data in this portfolio from the dynamic uh, concepts that means and node.js and mongodb so we are going to divide this portfolio into five sections that means five different modules the first one will be intro the second one will be about third one will be experience fourth one will be projects and the fifth one will be courses even if you want to uh, pull this uh, contact info from the dynamic uh, thing also no worries you can bring it from the node.js itself so before uh, getting started with all these things first of all we have to set up our node.js server so let me go to our code base once yeah so this is our root level folder mon portfolio now in this root level folder only i am going to set up our backend so first we have to initialize the npm in this root level folder so i'm going to split this terminal into two parts the first part will be for the front end and the second part will be for the node.js that means back end now i'm going to initialize the npm using the command npm init so it will ask some basic questions for all the questions you just have to press the enter here you can see we got the package.json file now first and foremost we have to install the express.js as well as the modules which we are using in the backend so mostly we'll be using the normal uh, npm dependencies like mongoose nodemon as well as these uh, uh, what we can call dot uh, env all these things so first let me start with the npm install 
Express JS for the routing purpose in the backend, Mongoose for the database operations, and uh, .env for having the uh, uh, secured credentials. .env, I think these are more than enough, I believe. So if you need any other modules, we are going to install on the fly uh, when we got the requirement. So let me install all these things. So here you will get the node modules folder, you can see. So in this node modules folder, all the dependencies will be added. Now we need an entry point for the backend to start the server. So now I'm going to create a new file in the backend, which is called as the server.js. So here we need to install one more module that is called as the nodemon. So nodemon is used to restart the server whenever you hit the control S button. That means whenever uh, it observes any changes in the file, so automatically the backend server will be restarted. So npm i nodemon. So please install. Yep. So it got installed. So if you go to the package.json, here you can see we have the list of uh, dependencies that we have already installed. Dot env, express, mongoose and nodemon. So in this lecture, we will just set up the node server. So first we have to uh, get the express object. So const express is equal to require express require express. Now we have to get the app variable const app is equal to express dot app oh sorry it's not express dot app it's just express yeah now we have to write the default route if you want to keep this route you can keep it or else you can ignore it we can just restart the server so directly i'm going to start the server app dot listen so the first parameter will be the port number and the second parameter will be the callback function. So right now it got the port number 3000, but I'm going to change it because in the localhost 3000 already we are running the react server. So you cannot run the same two applications in the same port. That's the reason we have to use the different port. So now I'm going to take the port from. So const port is equal to so I'm going to take it from the process env itself process dot env dot port or else 5000. So if there is no port available in the process dot env, we are going to take it 5000 else it will be port P O R T. That's all. So this is enough to start the server. Now you just need to write nodemon server. Here you can see I got the message server running at port number 3000, but this should not be 3000. This should be the actual port what it got taken. So I'm going to write dynamically. Here you can see server listening on port number 5000 because we have given 5000. So this is about the starting of node server. So in the next lecture, we are going to see how to connect the node.js and MongoDB. Thank you. Welcome back guys. In this lecture, we are going to see how to connect the node.js and the MongoDB database. So if you are already aware of this, you can skip this lecture because I'm going to show it from the Mongoose Atlas website, not Mongoose, MongoDB Atlas website. So let me open the MongoDB Atlas. So if you don't have the account, please create a new one. Sign in. So I'm going to log in with my existing credentials. So I'll use my Google. So only for the first time you have to go to the MongoDB Atlas. So if you are already aware of the MongoDB compass from there itself, you can uh, create the database. So for the beginners, uh, this, this would be helpful. That's the reason I'm showing. So this will be the dashboard for the logged in user, the MongoDB Atlas dashboard for the logged in user. So now uh, to check the list of databases that you are already using or that you want to use now, you just need to click on this browse collections. 
So here you can see these are the list of databases I am using. Now I am going to create a new database here. So mon portfolio Udemy. This is my database name. And here I am going to write the default collection name as users. So retrieving list of databases. So it doesn't matter what it will retrieve. We just need to get the database connection URL. So now let's go to the overview. Here you can see we have this connect button, right? Click on this connect button. And then uh, you just need to click on this connect using MongoDB compass. Yeah, this is the connection URL. So here you have this password. So you have to create a user account in this uh, database axis and that password you have to use it here, not your MongoDB login password. There will be other uh, user account access in this database access. So here you have to create and that password you have to paste it instead of this uh, less than password greater than. So just copy this and go to our code. So in the root level, I'm going to create .env file. And here I'm going to create an uh, uh, variable called as the uh, mongo URL. Mongo URL. So I'm going to paste it here. That's all. So this is the MongoDB URL. So at the last, instead of test, you have to write your database name. So our database name will be a mon portfolio Udemy mon portfolio udemy so that's all guys now we have to uh, create the a folder called as uh, config config and here in this config i'm going to create db config db config dot js so in this file, I'm going to write the code for connecting our database to the Node.js. That means our backend server. And one more thing before writing the code, you have to open this uh, database in the MongoDB compass because every time we cannot go and see the changes in this web application. So it will be very lengthy process. So that's the reason they have provided a uh, desktop software called as the Atlas. Oh, not Atlas, Compass. MongoDB Compass. this one so just click on this and here also you have to paste the same url which you have copied from the mongodb atlas so here you have to paste it so i'm changing the password to my original thing connect so it will point to our database now let's go to the uh, database that we have created mon database udemy yeah mon portfolio udemy this is our database so this is the deployed version that means production this is the new one so refresh there is nothing here now let's go to the connection code yeah so here as i said we are going to use the mongoose dependency or module whatever you call it so to perform the queries using the mongodb compass or mongodb atlas const mongoose is equal to require mongoose then i'm going to write mongoose dot connect so i already got the snippet so let me use this first close this yeah so the mongoose dot connect will accepts one uh mandatory parameter one optional parameter so this optional parameter is having different set of properties so these are for the just security purpose if you want you can keep it or else you can ignore it use new url parser use unified topology use create index these are uh, normal uh, optional things if you want to keep this object you can keep it else you can ignore and we don't need this or thing because already we have our connection url in the process dot env dot mongo underscore url so if you open this dot env you can see mongo underscore url you have to paste it in the mongoose dot connect now i'm going to create the connection object const connection is equal to it's not connection it's connection connection is equal to 
mongoose dot connection now we have to verify that connection connection dot on so there is a method called on so in this on we are going to have two parameters the first one parameter first parameter will be the error so if there is any error we are going to print uh, not all these things just write one callback function error connecting to database and then we have the success scenario uh, connection dot on connection dot on the parameter will be connected connected so here the callback function will be console dot log connected to database that's all so these are the two uh, callback functions or whatever you call it so if it is error it will throw the uh, uh, console dot log error connecting to database else it will show uh, connected to database or else let's show mongodb connection successful mongodb connection successful now here you just have to write module dot exports is equal to mongoose module dot exports is equal to mongoose yeah so let's see so after adding or any uh, changing any things in the dot env file you have to restart the server nodemon server that's all now uh, let's go to the server.js and import the file const db config is equal to require dot slash config slash db config so it will show whether it is successful or not so we got, got an error so throw mongoose error uri parameter open uri must be okay let's go to uh, config db config connection so let's restart the server nodemon server still it is throwing the error oh here it is the invalid password let me change it i just uh, copy and pasted the exact thing i have not changed it now let me restart still it is crashing mongo url everything is correct only why it is crashing go to the config db config let's remove this extra parameter oh got it got it so we have installed the dot env library but we have not imported so you just have to import the dot env so that's the reason it is getting crashed so go to the server.js so here you have to import it uh, require dot env config so this thing now let's see what is the error uh, still it is showing the same error dot env hmm, let me delete this terminal and restart it nodemon server and uh, yeah let's see still we are getting the same error mongoose error what is this must be okay let's go to the dbconfig.js once so const mongoose is equal to require mongoose okay mongoose dot connect mongo url so let me print these ones in the console so you can get an understanding whether it is printing in the database or not that means whether we are getting the dot env file value or not console dot log process dot env dot mongo url i understand what is the error let's see yeah it is not printing so it should be process dot uh, env only mm, why it is not printing 
let's copy exactly mongo url mongo url it's almost same undefined you can see here it is showing undefined i'm not sure why why it is uh, showing undefined mm. server.js require dot env config here also we have installed dot env mm, okay i'll check the error and i'll come back to you give me two minutes thank you guys so i got the error so here you can see in the dot env we are using this uh, single colon so we should not use that you have to use equal to so sorry for the issue now let's restart the server nodemon server here you can see the url got printed now let's remove that url yeah now it's fine server listening on port 5000 and mongodb connection successful so by this we have completed the backend setup that means uh, node.js and express.js server setup as well as the mongodb setup so in the next lecture we will be working on the models thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the models in our backend the models are nothing but mongodb schemas or models anything so let's close everything i'm going to create a new folder called as models so if you want to perform any op api operation using the node.js and mongodb you should have the table model that means uh, in, in SQL, we will call it as the table, but in the MongoDB, we will call it as the collection. So for every collection, you should have one structure. That means document structure. So that we will define in the models. So we are going to have two different models files here. User model. This is optional. User model dot JS. And the second one will be a portfolio model. Portfolio model dot js so in this we are going to have lot of sub models starting from intro to uh, contact everything so let's design this so user model we will be working at the end of the course this is not required now so first we are going to make the portfolio dynamic this is, that is our task now const uh, mongoose is equal to require mongoose so if you open the output first we have to make the intro section dynamic so in the intro section let's see what we are having so we are having this hi i am so we need not to make this dynamic because it will be common for everyone so even if you want to uh, have it as the welcome text property you can keep it so else uh, you can ignore it the second one will be uh, first name and uh, last name the first name of the developer and last name of the developer then caption this is called as the caption then this is called as the description so if you include these also you will get four different things welcome text first name last name caption description five things so in the intro model we are going to have five different variables everything is a string and everything is required now let's create that const intro schema is equal to new mongoose dot schema so let's close this yeah so first one will be welcome text welcome text so it should be type string require true and the second one will be first name first name type string required true then we are having last name type string required true then we'll be having a uh, caption caption type string required true let's format yeah so the last one will be a uh, description so we have to show some small description in the intro section description type string required true that's all so we got the intro schema 
now let's come to the about so let's close this yeah about is very simple we have this uh, lottie image url or lottie animation url you can call it a, call, can call it anything and the next one will be uh, description one and this is description two so now i'm going to write const about schema about schema is equal to so let's close this first now i'm going to have the first one will be lottie url lottie url type string require true then we'll be having a uh, description one description one type string require true and then i'm going to have description two type string require true that's all yeah so we got two uh, sections schemas now let's go to the third one oh we are having the skills in the about so skills is an array skills is an array type array required true yeah now let's come to experience const experience schema is equal to as like the previous first one will be uh title so title type string required true and the second one will be period from end to period see type string required true and next we are going to have company company same type string required true let's see what we are having additionally so company role that means title uh, period and description that's all so the last one will be description type string required true that's all this is about the experience schema now the next one will be const uh what you can call it as project schema projects schema is equal to close this and then first one will be obviously title type string required true then description type string required true close then we'll be having image type string required true close then we are having a uh, link type string required true close the last one will be technologies used in this project or you can call it as the tech stack anything let me use technologies only technologies type array required true that's all now come to the uh courses schema so this will be optional for you because i am an instructor i'll be having both projects and courses so const instead of courses you can have it as education so const courses schema yeah so now obviously course title type string required true next one will be description type string required true image type string required true and i think these are enough for the course i believe let's see title description image that's all or if you want to navigate to the course link you can have the link that's all so this is the uh course schema so the last one will be contact schema contact 
schema is equal to new contact schema so let's see what are the things that we have so we have a uh, name age gender email mobile country okay so first one will be name type string oh sorry type string required true email type string required true uh mobile sorry mobile type string required true uh age type string required true country or we can call it as address type string required true think we are good let's see uh email mobile age gender yeah gender i'll keep uh, after the name gender type string required true that's all guys now we have uh six different schemas intro schema about schema experience schema project schema uh, courses schema contact schema so now if you observe we have six different schemas right so in this we will be having multiple documents only for these three experience projects and courses remaining for the three we will be having only one document but we don't have any other choice we have to keep it in the collections only so let's export all these things now module dot exports is equal to so here first i am going to export intro intro is nothing but mongoose dot model so the collection name will be intros then we'll be having about abouts experience you can call it as experiences or let's have experience only cannot call it as experiences projects projects courses courses contact contacts that's all so we have six different schemas and six different models now so intro about experience projects and contact so now uh, let's see if i refresh the db so right now we have only users so after performing any query we are going to get all those things in this uh, what it is mon portfolio udemy so this is about the models so in the next lecture we will be working on the adding all our static data into the collections so right now we don't have any data in the collections we have to create the collections and we have to add all the static data then we have to pull to the ui so after we make this uh, dynamic we will be working on the admin panel that is the route that means our project route that's all and thank you welcome back guys in the last lecture we have completed the mongodb models right so now in this lecture we are going to add all the existing data into the db so here you can see we already have the existing static data in our application react app so now we are going to add this data into the db and in the next lecture we are going to write the api for that and we'll pull the data from the backend to the react so first uh, let me create a file here this is the temporary file so i'm just writing static data dot js as i said this is the temporary file so first i am going to start with the uh, what we can call intro so const intro is equal to so we will be having only one object because we cannot have multiple intros as like project so first we are having the hi i am this will be the welcome text sorry what is this
okay so as per the model only you have to write so for your convenience i am going to keep the model side yeah so we are going to write all these text and the values uh welcome text and hi i am yeah already we have written and then we are having first name so first name it will be my name and then we have last name ready and then we have caption caption i think i build things for the web this is our caption caption we got this then we have description description so let me copy our description that's all so we got the intros data now let's create about yeah const about it is also an array yeah so the first one will be lot url so let me go to the client src uh pages about copy the lot url this is the one yeah then uh we have description 1 and description 2 description 1 will be this one put here format document and we also have description 2 so let me cut this here oh yeah so description 2 also we have so i'll add it here why this is mm. yeah so this is description 2 i don't know somewhere we are getting the errors mm oh we got two columns that's all yeah so we got two sections data now now let's create the projects oh in the about we also have the skills yeah skills is an array so it should have javascript react node express mongodb firebase yes so i think we missed the comma here still have comma why it is throwing the error then it should be here yes now it is perfect now let's create the projects data oh i think we already have the projects data so we can get rid of this can see if you go to the resources we have the projects data so only thing you have to do is you just need to remove the id property because mongodb will give the automatic id for you remove the id id and here also id there also id and here also that's all and coming to the uh, let's see whether these projects dot js is matching our structure or not if you go to the project model portfolio model so it should match then only we will get the exact data so title description image link technologies so title description image link technologies yes project structure is matching now let's go to the experiences so in the experiences we have company title period description 
and uh, in the model also you should have the same thing uh, experience title period company description yeah everything is matching L the last one is courses 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 is having title image link and uh, what we have in the model courses title description so we don't have the description in the current uh, courses data so let's add that also we need to remove the id remove 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 yeah and add description is equal to empty string initially description is equal to empty string copy and paste this in every object so whatever you do and whatever you add that should match the model structure that is the only condition you can add it anything here but that should be present in the model also okay guys i think we are good now we can add this uh, static data that we have prepared uh, into the mongodb so first uh, let's start with the about okay so let's refresh here also let me refresh uh, all the databases and collections now here in this i'm going to create a new collection called as intros intros so here you can see it got created now i'm going to add the data import document just get rid of everything here and copy the data that we have prepared static data so this is the array right so just copy this copy and paste it here so we got everything ready and click on insert so insert is not permitted if you have any errors i don't know what are the errors here let me cross check oh here also these uh, uh, keys also should be in the strings then only it will work uh, this oh sorry okay we can do one thing then so we can convert these into the normal json so we will get the quotes automatically json formatter not this there is a website which will give the quotes automatically yeah this one so just copy this and put it in the website you will get the json in the quotes format copy and now let's go to the mongodb and paste it this time you can see it is working so welcome text first name last name caption description so we got the intro data ready now let's add abouts abouts so there also let's get the data first copy this array and put it in the formatter process copy go to the mongodb go to the abouts click on the add data insert document paste it insert so we got the about now lot url uh, description 1 description 2 now let's add the projects projects here also same thing go to the projects resources copy the data copy the data and format it copy the array don't copy this text just copy the array replace process copy and add oh not here go to projects add data uh insert document get rid of everything insert projects data also got inserted 
now let's go to the experiences so experiences here also same thing just get rid of the id property and copy the array copy the array and put it in the formatter get the formatted json and uh, paste it in the mongodb before that we have to create experiences i think experience experience add data insert document the last one will be courses so just create courses courses and go to courses and here get the courses data copy array format it i'm just repeating like a normal school kit but this we have to do we don't have any other choice copy courses add data insert document paste it insert and the last one is contacts contacts create collection contacts so here already we have the document so we can directly add that go to the output so we have this data again this is also we have to format then only it will work process oh, okay i think we have the errors hmm let's create the contact data in the static data file as per the model okay let's see what we have in the model portfolio model contact schema so we have name gender email mobile age address so const contacts is equal to so name email yaprakash195 at uh, gmail.com uh, mobile <coughs> mobile double nine eight nine six four nine two seven eight and also after the age you should have the gender and male gender male and uh, age i will give null and then we have address address i'll give india india think we are good so just copy this array format it format it and copy and paste it in the contacts that's all now we have all the dynamic data of our portfolio in the mongodb so in the next lecture we are going to write the get data api that means get portfolio data api to populate the complete dynamic portfolio thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the get portfolio data api so we have all the models ready we have the collections ready and we also have the data ready in that collections and the documents now we just have to write the api to get the data so let's go to the code so we don't need this static data anymore we have everything in the db okay so now let's go to the root level and create a file called as the routes so in this we are going to write the first route portfolio route dot js then we will be having const 
router is equal to require express dot router then we have to import all the models intro about project all the things so let's import const so the first one will be intro second one will be about third one will be project fourth one will be uh yeah contact contact then we have experience then we have course so intro project about yeah we have these three things is equal to require model slash portfolio model let's see whether we have given the correct names or not so intro about experience projects courses so it should not be projects courses it should be project and course so here the collection name should be plural that means intro sabots but the model name always should be singular only so intro about experience project course contact yeah so now we have everything ready now i am going to write the first api so router dot get the api name should be get portfolio data get portfolio data so this should be a sync a sync so let me write request and response yeah this is the end point now whenever the front end calls this end point we are going to pull the data from the mongodb try catch so now we have to pull the data from every collection let's do a quick thing so here i think my github copilot will help me a lot in this so it will generate all the automatical snippets so const uh intros intros is equal to await intro dot find const about is equal to await about dot find const project is equal to await project dot find contact is equal to contact dot find experiences courses uh then we have uh oh i think we got it now you just need to write response dot status dot send you should not send everything so first you have to send intro intro be because intro we have to send only one that means intros of intros of zero even for the about also about zero then you can send all the things projects is equal to projects contact is equal to contact of zero experience course courses yeah we got everything so this is little bit confusing make it experiences in the data so i think we are good so and in the catch block you just have to write response dot status 500 and send error yeah this is the end point so now let's go to the uh, ser uh server dot js so here i have written module dot exports is equal to router now go to the server dot js and create the entry point for it about the port const portfolio route is equal to require dot route dash portfolio route now i'm going to write the endpoint app dot use express dot json so whenever the api request is coming with the keyword app dot use slash api slash portfolio we are going to send that request to this portfolio route which will be located in the routes slash portfolio route now let's test this get request in the uh server itself that means browser itself so let's go to the browser and here i am going to write localhost 5000 slash api slash portfolio slash get 
portfolio get portfolio data S press enter you can see we got the complete data so with this data only we are going to populate our complete front end so we got intro we got about we got projects data we got contact we got courses oh in the experiences we got nothing let me check something went wrong in the experience experience dot find let's go to the portfolio model uh, okay it's experiences or experience let me check the db experience a lot of confusion with this what we have to call experience only in the model it will experience only uh, here also i'll give experience now let's uh, refresh the data so you always use experiences only don't get confused like me yeah uh, still it is showing the empty data mm, what is the issue experience here also experience copy this and put it here okay experience dot find now let's try once again still it is showing empty hmm what could be the issue let me check portfolio model mongoose dot model experience okay so here just have experiences and uh, even in the db also we have to change this to experiences mm, then it should work maybe okay i'll delete this document and drop collection okay i'll do one thing first i'll copy the complete data mm. here we have only export collection export full collection export okay there is some issue so let's uh, get rid of this and delete the collection experience so paste it drop now let's go to the same here and create the collection name as experiences oh we already have the data yeah experiences now it is perfect so in this i am going to add the data so go to the static data uh, where we oh client src resources experiences so already the data got selected here go to the formatter put it here not this copy it's not even copying let me copy once again control c control v process copy the data put it in the mongodb insert data now let's refresh this time we should get the experiences data awesome so here you can see we got the experiences data so now we have all the data ready to populate the front end but here we have to write some more logics in the front end before populating that means we have to connect the front end and back end we have to write the reduce and all the things so in the next section we will be working on 
making the portfolio dynamic because we already have the API ready. We are going to use that API data and we will make this uh, page dynamic. Thank you. Welcome back guys. In this lecture, we are going to work on the API integration. So already we have the API ready and the data ready and we are also getting the data. So now we have to write an API connection in the front end, which will connect to the MongoDB and Node.js and pull the data. So go to the client and terminate the job once. So first and foremost, go to the client uh, package.json. You have to add the proxy. Proxy, proxy is nothing but the backend URL. <coughs> so it is nothing but localhost 5000. Copy this and put it here instead of 3000. Make it 5000. Then we have to install all the modules in the front end which are required for the API integration and further processes. So first one will be npm i axios for API call. We will be using Redux, React Redux, also Redux toolkit for the loading and uh, some uh, state management purpose. So let me show the import statement of the Redux toolkit. Redux toolkit npm. Mm. Copy this and put it here. Press enter. Yeah. Here you can see everything got installed. Now I'm going to restart the server. NPM start. Yeah. So now let's go to the uh, where we can call it. I'll call the data in the app.js only. So in this uh, data in this here only I'm going to call the data and I'm going to put it in the red user. So from the red user, we are going to take the data into every page. So now uh, let's write an API call here. So I'll just write use effect, use effect snippet, remove the dependency. So first I'm going to write const uh, not this just write get data get data and here I'm going to write const get portfolio data so this should be an asynchronous operation so here I'll just write try cache block try catch try catch and here I'm going to write const response is equal to await axios dot post not post get axios dot get it should be slash API slash API slash portfolio slash get portfolio data and I'm going to print the response in the console because we don't have the Redux ready. So right now we have to print the response in the console. So once we set up the Redux, we are going to add it in the reducer. So use effect is not defined and get portfolio data is also not defined. Put it here and import this use effect got imported. Axios is not defined. Let's import Axios. Import Axios from Axios. So yeah, let's see the console once. Oh, first of all, we have to refresh. Close everything here. Just refresh. 
so we should have the data in the console awesome here you can see we have the data so i am going to directly print the response dot data instead of all the junk now let's see refresh so i have only the data that we required intro about projects courses experiences and uh, all the things so we have these uh, warnings because we have written lot of loops so for every time you just have to use the key unique key so then we can get rid of the comments uh, that's a warning not a error so you can ignore it for the time being yeah so now we have to put the data in the red user so if you want to put the data in the red user first you have to set up the redux so let's go to the uh, src and create a new folder called as redux and here i am going to write a slice which is called as the root slice because we are going to have only one slice so root slice dot js so now i am going to create the slice first you have to uh, import create slice from the uh, redux toolkit so i am going to write const root slice is equal to create slice so it should be the first one will be name will be root initial state so in the initial state we are going to have only one thing that is loading loading will be false false and also data or we can call it as portfolio data null that's all these are the initial data and then we are going to have actions actions that that are nothing but the red user first one will be show loading uh i'll write the capital functions show loading so in this we are going to make the loading true and the next one will be hide loading as like show loading we are going to have hide loading here we are going to get uh, state dot loading is equal to false and then we have one more function set portfolio data which will called uh, whenever we get the data from the back end so we have all the three actions ready so whenever this uh, set portfolio data is called we will put the data into this portfolio data variable now i'm going to write uh, uh export so Mm, default root slice and also we need to export these functions that means actions so i'll just write export const uh so what i'm going to write means show loading hide loading hide loading and all the things is equal to root slice dot reducers root slice dot reducers x port that's all now we need to uh, create the store so i am going to create the store dot js so first of all we have to import create store from the react redux not create store now this is configure store so first uh, let's import root reducer or root slice so root slice got imported now i am going to write const reducer is equal to combine reducer root then we are going to write uh here itself import combine reducers from the redux and then we are going to have configure store from the redux toolkit import configure configure store from redux toolkit now we are going to configure the store that's all so we have the store ready so just write export default store 
now let's go to the index.js and import the store store got imported also you need to import the provider so let's import the provider from react redux import provider from react redux and here i'm going to keep the provider here also i'll do the same thing and just let me write store is equal to store yeah so create slice is not defined in the root slice so let's import that now everything is perfect so go to the app.js and whenever we get the data from the backend just write dispatch action so const uh, dispatch is equal to dispatch is equal to use dispatch let's import and here i'm going to write const oh sorry uh, dispatch set to portfolio data set portfolio data is nothing but response dot data that's all i think we are good now uh, we have to cross check whether the data is perfectly inserted in the reducer or not and also we need to check one more condition loading so we are going to control the loader from the reducer itself so now i am going to write const loading is equal to use selector use selector state is equal to state dot root because we have only one root one reducer so show loading is not defined in the app.js where it is uh, line number 26 yeah it's not loading it's not show loading it's just loading so by default it will be false so now here to cross check the data whether the data is perfectly inserted in the reducer or not i'm going to write one use effect use effect here and let me write portfolio data so here i'm going to destructure portfolio data from the uh, reducer portfolio portfolio data from the reducer and whenever this changes i am going to print it in the console so if we got anything in the console that will be from the reducer only because we don't have any console statement outside of this use effect so this should be console.log error yeah so let's refresh and test so refresh so we are getting an error awesome let's see what is the error cannot destructure property of show loading root slice dot reducers so i think it would it would be root slice dot actions maybe yeah actions only refresh still we are getting the error cannot destructure loading of zero as it is undefined why it is showing undefined hmm okay root slice app dot js state dot root use selector in the store also we have written same root is equal to root slice why it is showing undefined hmm loading and portfolio data we have only two mm, i think the issue will be in the root slice only okay okay got it so here we have to write export default root slice dot reducer so we have to export the reducer and actions not the root slice direct file yeah so now i think we are good let me check in the console here you can see so by default it will be null so whenever we get the api data the data will be updated in the reducer so this 
app uh, 27 line will be printing from the portfolio data which is not coming from the red user so now we have the data in the red user we can use the data to populate the portfolio that's all so thank you see you in the next lecture welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the populating the front end data from the data which we already have in the front end so we already getting the data we already putting it in the uh, red user now we just need to use the data and change these values first we will start with the intro section so copy this line it will be very useful and go to the intro app.js pages intro.js and put this here use selector yeah that's all so the thing is uh, go to the content area in the layout or home page index so we have this header and we have this div right all these are dynamic only header is static so what you can do mean just put the same thing here so initially portfolio data will be null right so when portfolio data is null you should not show this div so when portfolio data is present then only you have to show that div so that means for couple of seconds it should be an empty string or not empty string empty data use selector is not defined let's define then why bother yeah now let's see if i refresh empty data empty data don't worry about that we are going to add the loader so first let's go to the intro.js so we have this portfolio data right so from that just destructure the const intro intro from the portfolio data and then from that you have to destructure const uh, what we have we have a uh, first name first name uh, last name welcome text welcome text then we have a uh, description and caption that's all now just remove this hi i am and put a uh, welcome text welcome text or if it is not there just put empty string similarly this is the first name and last name so if first name if it's not there empty string else last name if not there em empty string and this will be the caption oh not description this will be caption and this would be the description that's all now let's see so if you observe after changing the after refreshing the page whatever the data we see in the intro section that should be dynamic only because we don't have the any text in this everything from the variables only that means back end refresh awesome so here you can see for the first time we got the data in the dynamic so now uh, let's go to the second section about so just copy these things and go to the about so put it here just remove these skills so here we need skills lotty url lotty url and description one description one and description two this should be from the about and here also i'm going to keep it about now let's make everything dynamic so this is src right so this should be lotty url and this is the paragraph this should be description one or empty string this should be description two or empty string 
and here we have skills we are getting the skills from dynamic let's refresh and use selector is not defined let's define that use selector defined now let's refresh uh, that's all we have two sections dynamic now go to the experience here also do the same thing so instead of intro just bring it experiences and here we'll have only experiences we don't have any dish structure anything so already we have these experiences it is matching our structure so just remove this static import statement that's all we don't need this loading also okay now let's refresh use selector is not defined and also uh, selected item by mistake i have removed that const selected item index selected item index and set selected item index 0 and also use selector needs to be imported i think we are good let's refresh that's all we are getting experience dynamically so just copy this and put it in the projects go to the projects and put it here and here uh, you just need to import the use selector and here instead of experiences make it projects and get rid of these projects that's all refresh it's dynamic now the last one will be courses paste it inch of experiences make it courses and here also get rid of this and also use use state is already there i believe and the import should be use selector that's all refresh so projects and courses also working fine so the last one should be say hello so by this you can understand whether we are getting the data or not because you can see in the say hello we have country india but in the database we have address we don't have country we have address so if you get the address after changing we are successful so go to the contact and get rid of this user so we don't need set selected item index let's import use selector from that import contact so instead of user make it contact that's all user is not defined here also make it contact so that's all we have to do so if we get the address field in the contact object then we are good refresh hope 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 we should get superb here you can see we got even the id also we can get rid of that id so name gender age age is equal to null so mobile and address so everything is fine so i think we are good so if we want to check whether the dynamic uh, thing is working for perfectly or not just go to the database and play with the data so i will go to the intro and i'll try to change my uh, welcome text so instead of hi i am i am going to write hello update that's all if you change now we will get the data hello you can see like this now the left uh, the one which we have left is loader so whenever the api request is in the processing state we should not show this white space we uh, we already have the loader component that one you have to show so go to the app.js so here i'm going to write before calling the api i'm going to show the loader dispatch show loading true we need not to send the data anyhow it will be show loading true 
and here it should be hide loading dispatch hide loading hide loading in the catch block also i'm going to write dispatch hide loading and one more thing is we have this api call right so it should be called whenever the data is null it should not call every time so just get rid of this use effect put portfolio data so whenever the portfolio data is null then only it has to call if not portfolio then get the portfolio data now let's refresh loading data awesome almost ready we are you can see perfect go to the mobile view refresh super cool so everything is working fine with the dynamic content so that's all guys so now we are done with the dynamic portfolio but still we are left with one module that is admin because every time we cannot go and change our requirements in the mongodb we may not have the access in some particular points of time so there's the reason we should have the admin panel in this web application only with some authentication like that so that we will be building in the next part thank you Welcome back guys. In this section we are going to start the admin panel of our Monstrak portfolio application. So first of all I will show you how the admin panel should work and how the admin panel is working in the production app. So then you can get a basic understanding about that so you will easily understand when I write the code also. So here you can see this is the deployed version uh, portfolio not admin. So this is the admin. You can see this is the deployed version not our portfolio not our uh, current version. So here I have the prototype of the admin module. So here we are going to have different tabs based on the sections. So in the deployed version just for the time being I made uh, three sections dynamic. So intro section here you can see this is the first name last name caption description this is the about section lot url description 1 description 2 experiences so here we have the edit button and delete button like this so you can edit a particular experience data description like that and you can also edit uh, any project course any like that so right now let me show you a simple example so uh, here uh, i have this i build things for the web so now I am going to edit this in the deployed version dynamically. So this is the caption. So instead of web, I am going to write websites. And I'll click on the save button. Intro updated successfully. Now if I refresh this, I have to get here websites. You can see. So this is very simple. Like this way, you have to update all the sections. So now let's start building this. So for the admin panel, we will be using the entity component library for all the components and everything. So even for the toast messages also, we are going to do the same. So let's work on the entity now. Close everything, all the tabs. Yeah. So now if you expand uh, before that, let me install the entity npm i entity oh sorry so now let me go to the local host app so this is the deployed admin now uh, local host 3000 yeah the server we are installing entity okay after install i'm going to restart the server so first we will work on the front end of the admin panel then we will work on the apis we have to design the forms we have to get the existing data into the input fields all those things we have to do then after we will work on the uh, update apis so for projects experiences and courses we need to work on update api insert api as well as the delete api also suppose uh, if you want to add any new project also you can add from the admin panel if you want to delete an existing project from your portfolio you can delete it that means everything dynamic so you need not to touch the code once you deployed the application so all you have to do is operate your portfolio from the admin panel that's all yeah so here you can see npm start okay now i'm going to create a new folder in the pages instead of home 
I'm going to create close this new folder admin admin so here now I'm going to write uh, index dot js as like home we are going to have the admin so now I'm going to write rfce uh, instead just write admin now let's go to the app.js and create a route for it so this is the home route and this is admin route admin route now again in the admin we are going to create all the existing components for the admin panel that means we have to edit and update all those things right so now i'm going to write the naming convention as uh, admin intro dot js uh, admin about dot js because we should not confuse that's the reason i'm adding this admin keyword for everything so right now let's work on this too later we are going to design uh, declare the admin projects admin experience and all those things so first let's complete this too so let me write the components here rfce admin intro and here rfce admin about so till it gets started let me open the entity official website and uh, let's talk about some of the components mostly we'll be using only two components entity tabs as well as the input fields that means forms so first click on the get started button so to get all the entity styling you just need to import one statement so this one copy this entity slash dist slash entity dot css copy and paste it in the index.js and instead of entity dot css use entity dot min dot css so you won't get any console errors or warnings entity dot min dot css so that's all now uh, let's go to the admin route slash oh not a it's admin yeah so here you can see we got the admin now now let's have the same header in the admin header so header should be imported from the components we got the header uh, but why this extra padding mm, let's see components header p5 is okay what is this extra let's see oh, what is this actually i'm not understanding this is admin what is this due piece mm, let's see from where it is coming okay instead of div let's use the normal fragment still it is same somewhere we are getting the padding applied don't know why let's see mm. app.js this is just the normal route and we are rendering directly the admin part from where the padding file is coming let's see what the heck is this i'm not understanding hmm let me go to the header and copy these things directly and put it in the admin div
now let's see still it is same mm. why it is uh, okay let's have only header give me two minutes guys i'll check the error and i'll come back to you okay thank you guys so i understand the issue this uh, extra margin is coming from the h1 text so that is the reason so let me remove the margin and padding for the h1 go to the index.css so here for h1 i'll just write m0 p0 so basically uh, it will have uh, margin bottom so let's make it important yeah now it should work yep so this is fine now so let's see if anything got disturbed in the portfolio so oh here you can see it got disturbed so in that scenario what we can do means uh, okay so we already have these uh, classes right k s r o h1 yeah let me give a class name header so header and in the header h1 i am going to have this yeah now nothing will disrupt yeah this is fine uh, even if i go to the admin also it would be fine i believe no this is not fine mm, dot header yeah it's dot header yes so this is the admin header now uh, we are going to design the tabs so it's very simple to design the tabs in the entity so if you go to the uh, entity tabs can see very simple if you open the code you just have to import the tabs from the entity and also tab pane so go to the index so here just import the tabs and also tab pane tab pane from the entity now let's design the tabs so just copy this component so we need around 6 tabs after this header okay just add one div and here just add the tabs and for this div just provide the class name empty 5 or 10 anything so right now just keep only two tabs so the first tab will be intro tab and the content should be intro component oh not intro admin intro admin intro we should not confuse yeah second one will be admin about admin about and here just remove this on change we don't require that now let's see the beauty we should get the components you can see i got the intro so let's change the second tab name this is about yeah so intro about so let's add some padding here for the div so p5 yeah this is fine intro about so admin intro admin about now in the next lecture we are going to work on the forms in this uh, components thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the intro form so only one form is uh, uh, very uh, that means it takes time so remaining forms we are going to replicate it so let me close this uh, why it is getting every time 
ओके कंट्रोल शिफ्ट एग्जिट मोवावी वीडियो एडिटर एंड टास्क या नाउ इट इज फाइन गो टू द आउटपुट सो इफ यू सी इंट्रो दिस इज द टैब फर्स्ट नेम लास्ट नेम कैप्शन डिस्क्रिप्शन एंड इन अवर करंट प्रोटफोलियो वी आलो हैव द वेलकम टेक्स्ट सो जस्ट डिजाइन दट सो गो टू द क्लोज एवरी थिंग क्लोज ऑल एंड ओपन ओनली अडमिन इंट्रो सो हियर यू शुड हैव ए फॉर्म कॉम्पोनेंट फ्रॉम द आंटी सो लिजन वेरी केरफुली ओनली दिस फॉर्म आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन फ्रॉम स्क्रैच रिमेनिंग एवरी थिंग आई एम गोइंग टू रेप्लीकेट इट सो इंपोर्ट फॉर्म इनपुट दट्स ऑल वी डोंट नीड बटन ओनली फॉर्म इनपुट फ्रॉम द आंटी सो नाउ वी जस्ट नीड टू हैव फॉर्म डॉट आइटम फॉर्म डॉट आइटम and here we are going to have input is a component from the entity or else we can use our normal input that's up to you so let's use the normal input only so then uh, what i am going to write here for the form item you just have to write name property name is mandatory here so this name must match with our mongodb model properties so this is the welcome text that's all now let's see here you can see i got this input field let's style these ones so go to the index.css so we are going to have lot of input fields that's the reason i'm going to write the input styling in the index.css itself input so i'll just write input height is equal to 40 pixels border 1 px solid gray and also width the hundred percent width the hundred percent padding uh, we only need padding left padding left twenty pixels yeah that's all this is the input. so now let's work on the input focus input focus outline none and uh, border i'm going to make it 2px solid somewhat dark color so just use gray and use some dark color now let's see like this so this is the input intro even if you want to decrease it to the half width you can decrease it so that's up to you so we got the intro right now uh, just use this and replicate it for the remaining so this should be a uh, first name first name placeholder you can give it anything first name it doesn't matter even if you give the uh, uh, capital letter small letter or all those things this is last name here also last name and this is caption caption here also caption and the last one will be description description should be text area not input field so i am going to write text area and placeholder should be description that's all let's see the output so for placeholder we do uh, for text area we don't have anything uh, in the styling part so just copy this and uh, or else just put text area here and for again i'm going to write one more text area and here i'm going to write uh, height is equal to 100 px that's all so we got everything ready intro first name last name caption and description and here i am going to have save button or update button so let's go to uh here i am going to have dot flex dot justify and uh button save i am going to write save 
so class name is equal to so px5 py2 and bg primary and text white that's all so we got save button and this should be justify end and width should be full uh, w full white is not taking oh spelling is wrong yeah you can see i have the save button so just make it px10 now for this form you just have to write uh, on finish on finish you have to write on finish function which will which will uh, give the values to the function const on finish is equal to so here we will get the values we'll get the values and that values we are going to print in the console for the time being so actually we have to make an api call to update the intro so right now we don't have the api calls ready so just print the values so before printing the values we are not adding any new intro we are having just updating the intro module because you can see so let's close this entity now localhost 3000 we cannot add any new intro already we have the intro but we have to update it at any time so if you want to update first you should know what are the values so now what i'm going to do means uh simple i'll just write first of all make sure you write the labels because if the values are there suppose if i write something here i don't know what this field is so you should have the labels also for that for form item only you have the label property so better have the label instead of placeholder or if you want to have both you can have it welcome text yeah here also uh, welcome text so label welcome text copy this and add it for all the input fields so first name last name and all the things yeah so this should be first name first name n is capital uh, last name caption and this is description yeah now let's see you have this uh, welcome text at the uh, left side that means labels at the left side so if you want to get it at the top you have to write a property called as layout for the form layout is equal to you just need to make it vertical now this is perfect you can see so now you have to get the original values by default populated into this uh, form so for that you just have to write that means first you have to get the values const uh, portfolio data is equal to state dot root because we are only having one reducer so portfolio spelling is wrong yeah now it is correct so use selector is not defined why it is not showing the snippets import use selector and use dispatch from react redux okay so now for this form you just have to pass the initial values which should have the properties like the name first name last name caption like that so we already have the portfolio dot intro so that you have to pass to the uh, what we call uh, initial values for the form so now i'm going to pass it portfolio portfolio data dot intro 
that's all now the value should be populated you can see all the values got populated let's try to refresh the page so we got an error because without getting the data only this got uh, loaded so you just have to write portfolio underscore intro uh, so the values are not working as expected so let's try to have a condition so you can remove this dot intro but go to the index.css and here i'm going to write const same thing uh portfolio data data is equal to use selector state dot root now whenever the portfolio is not equal to null then only we are going to show these tabs portfolio data then only i'm going to show the tabs that's all use selector is not defined okay now let's refresh loading we got the data loading we got the data now let's try to update hi i am so now let's make the button submit then only it will submit the values so go to the admin intro and make this button type is equal to submit type is equal to submit now let's try to hit this save button now open the console and see the values you can see i got welcome text hi i am so we got the updated values now we have to build the apis to update the mongodb with these values so in the next lecture we are going to work on the apis so first we will complete the process complete process about updating a module with the intro module so then we can replicate that to about projects experiences everything so this intro module might take some time but remaining all the modules will be completed in only one or two lectures that's all so thank you see you in the next lecture Welcome back guys. In this lecture we are going to work on the backend APIs for the updating the portfolio sections. So first let's go to the uh what we call it routes portfolio route. So I'm going to write the command here. Uh get all portfolio data. Portfolio data. this is the first api now let's start working on the update intro so update intro is the api endpoint try catch block await intro dot find one and update id is equal to request dot body dot underscore id and we are going to update all the values which are nothing but request dot body so new true send response dot status 200 catch error block so close the end point that's all so now here in the send i am not going to send this value i am going to write uh, data is equal to something intro and i am going to write a flag success true and also message intro updated successfully this message only i am going to display in the front end so you might be confused uh, how this code ha has come so i am using the github copilot so it will give the automatic suggestions so let me explain so const intro is equal to await find one and update we are going to find using the underscore id property which we will get from the front end itself so new request dot body new intro everything so now if it is success we are going to throw the intro updated successfully uh, success message else we are going to throw the error so now let's go to the front end pages so the route name is update intro go to the admin intro so this is the console log values so instead of this just write a try catch block so this is very important because in the every uh, admin intro part admin module part we are going to use the same thing first we have to dispatch loading so const 
dispatch is equal to use dispatch this must be imported use dispatch and here I'm going to write dispatch dispatch the action name will be show loading show loading and uh, let me import the show loading and hide loading redux slash uh, just root root slice that's all and also hide loading hide loading so first we are going to dispatch the show loading then i'm going to write const response is equal to await let's import axios axios dot post slash api slash portfolio slash update intro we are going to send the values that's all axios is not imported let's import this import axios from axios something went wrong here okay so await will work only in the async function so let's make this function async yeah now it is perfect and here the sending payload should have underscore id property values and underscore id is equal to portfolio dot intro dot underscore id that's all now you have to check the condition if response dot data dot success i'm going to write toast toast is nothing but toast not toast message we in the entity we are having a component called as message let's import it from the entity import message from entity so I'm going to write message dot success response dot data dot message else message dot error response dot data dot message let's see whether it is correct or not I'm not sure about the syntax entity message display normal message let's see how it should work message dot info message dot success yeah like this only i believe uh, yeah message dot success we are right so that's all i believe uh, in the catch block also just write message dot error error dot message okay I think we are good let's see refresh okay so instead of hello I'm going to write hi I am I'm going to write the previous statement save request failed with status 404 and one more thing is you can see uh, this uh, form is also coming so to avoid this you just need to write the z index property for the uh, what it is uh, loader so let's go to the loader this is the loader right i'm just writing z 100 100 now let's hit on the save button yeah this is fine but we got an error request failed with status 404 let's see portfolio route so slash update intro okay this is not put method this is post method i'm using only post methods refresh so even in the catch block also you have to hide the loading dispatch hide loading yeah so this time it should work i believe intro updated successfully but we have not changed anything let's see hi i am so previously it, it, it has hello now i am changing it to hi i am save 
intro updated successfully now let's go to the okay we already have this here admin let's keep like this only if i refresh awesome here you can see i got hi i am now i am going to change the developer name so instead of my name i am going to write uh david david paul so save intro updated successfully you can see everything is changing dynamically so like this way it should work i'm just replacing my name only i don't want to give my portfolio to other people so this hi i am save refresh that's all so this is about the updating updating intro so in the next lecture we are going to replicate everything for the about thank you welcome back guys in the last lecture we have completed the admin panel for the intro section now in this we are going to work on the about so just copy everything which is present in the intro and paste it in the about and find wherever there is intro wherever there is capital intro make it capital about replace it so replace it yeah now let's see uh here we will be having uh, one one input field and uh, two descriptions so just remove these two things yeah and the one input field will be lotty url so lotty url here also i am just writing oh placeholder lotty url and name also will be same lotty url so name should match the mongodb so this is description 1 here also description 1 here also description 1 copy and uh, paste it for the description 2 description 2 description 2 here also description 2 and uh, here instead of portfolio dot uh, oh we got it right only so it's not sm capital about it's small about portfolio dot about and here also it should be about here also it should be about update about values and everything is fine yeah that's all we need so let's see about so we got the values now we just need to get the api so go to the uh, portfolio route copy this replicate update about here also update about here also instead of intro just make it about request dot body dot underscore id the year also it is about data also about that's all guys i think we are done okay 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 let's cross check whether we are missing anything or not no we are not missing anything so let's refresh once and try the api so i'm going to change the description 1 so instead of hello i am going to write hey so this is the only change i am going to make save so here after refreshing we have to get hey mm no it didn't got updated uh what is the issue let's refresh okay let's go to the back end admin portfolio route so request dot body find one oh okay so here you can see this is uh, about 
yeah we didn't change the model name that's the issue now let's change it so instead of hello hey i will write hey save this time it should work i believe you can see it got changed successfully now let's try to change one lotty url even you can change the animation on the fly go to the lotty animation so just search developer so i think we are already using this now let me use uh this one so it's looking somewhat cool so you just need to copy this url copied and go to the admin panel and update it save refresh now you should get the different animation awesome here you can see everything is working fine so this is about the updating the admin even you can also update the skills but if you observe we missed the skills in the about so we need to have that so go to the skills hmm that means about about part admin about okay so just have same uh, description to and here let's make it skills here also skills and uh, placeholder also skills so but here we have to make some logic i'm going to write const temp skills is equal to values dot skills dot split separated by comma we are going to enter the skills with the help of comma and then we will separate it now i'm going to write values dot skills is equal to temp skills that all that's all so even while populating also we have to do the same thing so let me do it so initial values so first i'm going to write portfolio dot about now in the skills i'm going to write portfolio dot about dot skills join a uh, comma so we are going to remove the elements from the array and we are going to convert it as the string using the comma that's all now let's see you can see i got javascript react node js express js and firebase now i am going to write one more skill uh, which is nothing but um, first of all instead of comma just have some space and comma refresh yeah this is good now instead of firebase i'll be okay even firebase is good and i'll write aws of course i don't know much about aws just for the testing i'm adding about updated successfully now here i should get aws now you can see i got aws so skills and uh, uh, about is working fine even with the intro so we have completed two sections in the dynamic admin so we are left with uh, what we have experience projects and courses even for this three also if you write code perfectly for one section we can replicate it for the remaining two but here the complexity is you should not only do update you can able to insert a new experience you can able to edit the new experience and you can also able to delete so we have to uh, perform three operations for these uh, modules so thank you guys see you in the next section welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to start the experience module in the admin part so already we have completed two different modules intro and about now we are going to have the experiences so let's going to let's go to the uh admin piece and create a new component experiences dot js rfce functional component experiences now let's go to the index and create a one more tab and here i'm going to write 
experiences or experience whatever you call it three here also uh, experience experiences from the admin now let's see we got another tab so it is simply showing experiences so now i am going to show the list of experiences we already have in a normal cards so for that you just need to pull the data from the uh, what it is a red user so i'm just writing const uh, okay so we can directly write like this experiences followed by state dot root and here instead of experiences just write portfolio data portfolio data and then uh, you just have to import the use selector use selector and also use dispatch use dispatch now uh, create the object of the dispatch dispatch is equal to use dispatch so now first what i'm going to do means i'm going to create a grid dot grid so in web view i want four different uh, four cards per row so i just write grid calls four so now i'm going to loop through the uh, experiences in the portfolio const experience is equal to portfolio dot data i just destructured it now i'm going to write const experiences dot map for every iteration we are going to get the experience yeah so now i'm going to write uh, let me close this parenthesis yeah so here first i'm going to write h1 period so experience experience dot period and then it should have company experience dot company and then it should have a uh, title that means role role and then at the last it should have description let's see the output you can see we got a uh, period we got the company but we didn't got the title so let's see oh it should be title title yeah so now let's style this for this div i am going to write class class name is equal to uh, shadow and it should have border and also p5 padding 5 from all the sides yeah looking cool and to have the space between all these cards you just have to write write a uh, gap 5 can see now we have the space and you can also increase the border uh border 2 or else keep the border and have the border color border gray 400 yeah this is much better so now uh, we should have the description because we should able to get the description dynamically right now we just added statically but we have to make the description dynamic so before that just make this uh, uh, somewhat uh, looking good so for the h1 text period so period is the main thing so i just write text secondary and it should have text excel then let me have an underscore hr not underscore horizontal line yeah like this so even if you want to make the font bold also you can make it font bold font bold yeah so shaytek is the company react develop is the role so even if you want to write the 
details also you can write like this company uh, role and description we need not to do anything so here you can see yeah this is looking good so company self employed company uh, like this now uh, let's have the lorem ipsum description in every uh, mongodb document so let's write some lorem ipsum description in the experience okay if i go to uh, experiences somewhere we should have the lorem ipsum content yeah this one so i am going to add this for the description in the mongodb so you will get that to the front end also so we have only three so for description here i am going to add it paste and here also paste here also paste yeah so why this empty space okay it doesn't matter i believe update or else uh, uh why this empty space i am not getting okay first let's uh, cancel this and try to refresh experience so there is nothing wrong so everything is working fine here we are getting the description and then we should have the delete and edit button here so i am going to have a flex or uh, dot flex and here we should have edit and uh, delete so we got these two buttons and we have to make this uh, justify end justify end and also i don't want um, rounded i want the sharp corners i want sharp corners yeah let's have some space that means gap gap 5 so here for the main div i am going to have flex flex call gap also 5 mm gap 5 is not required because uh, let me write uh, pt here itself empty 5 yeah this is looking fine and even for this also it's not matching because here also we have this kind of color so let's make this uh, what we can call primary let's have it as the primary and should yeah so this is looking clean now so edit and it delete so edit should be at the uh, uh, right side because we need the handy items that means where we perform uh, maximum action should be at the uh, right side yeah this is perfect so edit and uh, delete so now before edit and delete first we should have the add new option that means if you want to add any new experience you should able to do that so here we are going to have a button add new and if you click on that we are going to get a model pop up so here you can see like this so based on this we are going to add a new then after we are going to use the same model pop up for the edit also that is the requirement so in the next lecture we are going to work on the add new experience thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the add new experience model so first let me create a use state hook so we are going to use the same model pop up for both add and edit so we should able to differentiate which is add and which which is edit const show add edit model show add edit model use state false and also i am going to write const uh, selected item for edit selected item for edit initially it is null that's all now i am going to create a model pop up from the entity model 
so sorry yeah model from the entity so here you will be having a property called as the visible so let me write a property called as visible oh, it is not showing okay it's not imported yet import model from entity so here i'm going to write visible is equal to so whenever show add edit model is true we are going to visible it and we also have the title prop title so now in the title we are going to have very simple if set selected item is not equal to null we are going to write edit experience else we are going to write add experience so we got everything now we just need to have a form so let me have the form form again from the entity so here form dot item uh, it should be normal import so let me have normal import placeholder period and here name is equal to so it should match the mongodb structure so small period and then we are going to have a uh, label label uh why it is not working so let's import form form and now it should work label is equal to period yeah so let's make the form value uh, align property not align layout property layout is equal to vertical layout is equal to vertical so just copy this paste it for the second one which is nothing but the company company so here label also company or you can call it as organization anything company then you will be having role so in our mongodb we called it as title so here also i'll just make it title also title and also the last one will be description job description or anything description here also same description that's all so then we need to have a button so uh, form right yeah dot flex uh, so get a button bg primary uh, yeah so if selected item for edit is equal to true then we will call it as update else we will call it as add so also we need to have a close button button close or cancel let's call it as cancel so here also uh, i'll do the same thing almost but some different styling so here i'm going to call it as instead of bg primary i'll just write border primary and uh, text also primary bg white obviously so on clicking on this i'm going to write on click i am going to write set show add edit model true oh false i think we are good so let's do this so first we should have a button at the top so here also dot flex again dot flex uh, it should have uh, justify end justify end because after clicking on that button only we need to open the model so button we need the class not this the snippet is not working as expected so button dot uh, bg primary dot px5 dot uh, py2 dot text white 
text to white so here also it should have gap and the button name should be uh, add experience add experience that's all let's see what we got so here you can see I got this button add experience so let's remove this white okay so now uh, let's have on click for this button on click we just need to write set selected item null and we need to open the model that's all so that indicates we are opening the model for the add that's the reason we are making it null okay i'm just clicking on this here you can see i got the model so here we have by default uh, options for the cancel okay so to remove that you just need to write footer false footer null so we have our own buttons cancel and add so that should be at the left side actually so make this justify end justify end that's all so cancel is working fine so on clicking on add we need to add the uh, okay on close also we have to write so on cancel expected only so even after clicking on this close button also it should work now the next thing is we need to have the api so first uh, let's work on the ui uh, we need to write the on finish right so here i'm going to write on finish on finish for both add and edit i have the on finish only so here i'm going to write const on finish is equal to so the value should be async and just copy the complete logic which we have written in the admin intro or admin about so complete try catch block and put it in the experiences so here first we are going to dispatch loading so let's import this if you don't have so dispatch show loading as well as dispatch hide loading as well as message message from the entity so here i'm going to write the endpoint name as add experience add experience so for add experience we are not going to have the id we will just have the values or else you don't need this uh, curly braces also you can directly send the values without these dots because we are just writing for the add so axios is not defined let's import the axios perfect yeah so now let's go to the back end and write the api for add experience i think my github copilot will give the snippet i believe add experience yeah okay had experience try cache block experience is equal to new experience request dot body send data is equal to experience success is equal to true experience added successfully response dot yep 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 that's all okay uh, i think this is enough so const experience is equal to new experience we are writing await experience dot save the complete request body we are saving and we are just sending the message experience added successfully okay now the thing is after adding we have to reload that means we have reload the content so for that what you have to do means uh, go to the app.js uh where it is yeah app.js so here we have this uh, get pol get portfolio data right so initially if data is if there is no portfolio data you have to call it 
or else whenever you make any updates or whenever you make any adding request also you have to call this get portfolio data so for that what i am going to do means i am going to have a flag reload data in the red user so i am going to write and use effect so yeah so whenever the reload data value changes and if reload data is equal to true then we are going to call the get portfolio data now let's go and add that flag uh in the reducer redux root slice reload data false and we are going to write the function reload data reload data true so action so action dot payload so after calling again we are going to make reload data false in the app dot js because it should keep on calling it should not keep on calling so here after getting the data i am going to write dispatch dispatch sorry reload data false because already we got the data then we have to make it false mm we have to export it here also we need to import it reload data come on come on okay just add it here mm yes that's all so use effect spelling is wrong i believe let's add the correct one yeah so now we know when should we call this reload data whenever there is an operation like add and edit we have to call this so it will check you here so if there is any reload data is true it is going to call the data again so now what i'm going to do means uh, let me have uh, go to the experiences.js in the admin so if it is success if response dot data dot success i am going to write dispatch okay first set show edit model false okay no problem and then dispatch hide loading and also above this okay not above this after this i am going to call dispatch reload data reload data true we need to import this reload data that's all reload data is not defined let's import oh it's already there yeah i think we are good so we may get the errors for the first time but no worries so experiences i am going to add a new experience like uh, 2021 2 2022 i did as something like uh, manager oh so just write company is equal to uh, abc abc tech so title is equal to manager and description uh, i'll just write uh, worked as manager worked as manager so i'm going to hit on the api uh, add button now experience added successfully here you can see i got this uh, what we call uh, new experience 21 to 22 but if you observe so whenever the loading is true also we could able to see that model pop up so we have to hide that so what i am going to do is to make that fix first uh, let me close all this in the app.js let's make the model pop up open and let's make the loading true ones so here you can see even with this uh, when the loading is true also we are seeing this model pop up so what we can do means we have to decrease the z index so this is ant dialog i believe okay ant model root so the ant model root z index must be less than our loader 
50 important so not working uh, let's have this ant model mask uh, yeah z index you can see it is having 1000 you have to make it 99 and then still it is having 99 means 0 important still it is showing and model pop-up wrap here also let's make it zero yeah so we have to make this ant model pop-up ant model wrap z index less than the our uh, what we call loader z index so now what i'm going to do means i'll go to the index.css so i just copied the class so here i'll just write z index is equal to 50 that's all so let's refresh oh we need to make the loading false let's remove this okay now let's try to open the model pop-up and i'll make the loading uh, not so we should not see the model now still we are seeing okay so let's make this z index 50 important yeah now it is perfect now let's get rid of the not symbol here mm. still we are seeing this somewhat ugly mm. how we can fix this so let's see keep this as a not symbol so we are seeing some blur kind of thing or else let's have the spinner uh, loader more than 1000 so where is this loader here also I'll make this 1000 still it is 10,000 yeah now it is perfect so even if you close this and open the model pop-up again okay refresh once so open the model pop-up uh, okay remove this we don't need now it is perfect so let's add one more 2021 to 22 company temp uh, role is equal to ceo description i'll just write nothing add here you can see experience added successfully so now we have added two different experiences so in the next lecture we will be working on the update and delete thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the update and delete functionality for the experiences so it is very simple already we have written the api for the add write so we are going to make some changes so we can work with the update portfolio route so update experience so almost simple try find by id and update find one and update we are going to get the id we will get the body new true and then response dot send status data experience success true message experience updated successfully catch we need to throw the error that's all so now let me write the delete here also find one and delete response dot send status data experience success true experience deleted successfully catch response dot status 500 close so we are done with the apis so let's go to the experiences dot js here now first work on the update here let's make this response let and remove this equal to 
and here just have response is equal to await so here we have to check if it is add or edit so now i'm going to check if selected item for edit is equal to something we are going to do update operation else we are going to do add operation add operation is nothing but this that's all so in the update thing we need to send the underscore id property that's the only condition so now when should we open the update model here you can see when we if we click on this edit we need to open the update model or edit model so let's click on this edit so now i'm going to write on click set selected item for edit that's all so first we are getting the value to the set selected item for edit then we are opening the model so here for the form and i am going to write the initial values initial values is equal to selected item for edit that's all now let's see refresh experience i am going to edit this uh, 21 to 22 thing so here you can see i got the period i got the abc tech title worked as manager so now i am going to update the company name instead of abc i am going to update it as xyz xyz tech update experience updated you can see company xyz tech now i am going to edit this uh, second one so oh you can see there is an issue here so even after clicking on this it is showing me the old one so we need to delete that old one whenever it got updated so this is on finish right so set show edit model false and also we need to write set selected item for edit is equal to null now let's see uh, let me refresh yeah experiences edit uh, what is the issue we got same for both mm, something is going wrong here you can see mm, okay let's delete these two because of the id something went wrong there okay let's uh, update uh, let's uh, have the delete operation so then we will fix the issue const on delete on delete async item try dispatch show loading await delete experience so we'll get underscore id response dot data dot success dispatch hide loading reload data true else we need to throw the error in the message dot error catch block dispatch hide loading message dot error close it that's all now when we click on the delete button i'm going to call the on delete so this is the delete button so i'm going to delete that both uh, invalid data experiences not this on click i'll just write on delete on delete experience let's close it that's all now i'm going to delete both experiences delete it got deleted now i'm going to delete this also superb experience deleted successfully now i'm going to add a new one so here we need to have some space uh for this button i'll just write um, mt5 mt5 okay so add experience so i'm going to write company is equal to abc or oh, period is equal to 2019 to 2020 2009 to 2020 company xyz title i'll just write manager description uh, worked as manager add 
so it got added successfully now i'm going to edit it xyz tech instead of this i'm going to write abc tech update superb now it got updated successfully now let me update the this 2021 to present one so here you can see it's working fine but the company is not changing and these details are not updating what the issue cancel this even if i click on any one i am opening these only hmm, why these details are not updating okay set selected item for edit okay uh set show model for edit true mm, what is the issue just have it empty object still it is showing the old one only something we are missing mm. on finish data dot success set selected item for edit is equal to null we are already making it null then why it is populating the values mm. okay 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 hmm. Hmm, okay guy let's try to do some more changes so here we are having this model cancel right so for this also i'm going to make the null that means set selected item null uh, then here also on clicking on the cancel button also do the same thing first uh, close the model and also make this null so let's hope for the best and close it let's see do we have any mistakes oh, this use effect is not required uh, yeah let's see now okay so i'm going to click on the edit button oh it's not even getting open edit what happened show edit model okay on cancel okay why oh, it is not opening let's see add add is getting open but edit is not opening let's see why oh here i have changed it by mistake set selected experience for edit experience set show edit model true so there is nothing here let's refresh edit so i got 2019 so this data only company xyz title manager perfect i closed it now i'm going to open this 2021 to present still the uh, I'm getting the same. What is this behavior of the entity model? Okay, let's give me two minutes. I'll check and I'll come back to you. Okay, guys, thanks for your time. So I found the issue. So actually the issue is whenever we hit on the edit button, it has to perform two statements it has to set this data into the set selected model for edit and also we have to make the model true so both are happening at the same time that's the reason we could not able to retrieve the exact data into the model so to resolve this we can have a flag so i'll just write const type is equal to add so initially type is equal to add that means operation type is equal to add and what i'll be doing means so whenever we click on this edit button, I'm also making the uh, set type is equal to edit. Set type is equal to edit. 
now while rendering the model i'm going to check the condition if set type is equal to edit until unless we get the data into the set selected uh, selected model for edit or selected data for edit then only we will show the model so first i'm going to write the condition so to open the model we should have either type is equal to add or we should have uh, type is equal to or even we don't need this so just have selected item for edit so if any one of these is true then only you have to open the model so i'm just wrap these two conditions in a uh, parenthesis now put the and symbol yeah so the condition what we have written means so we are checking if it is type or add or if the data is present in the selected model then only we are going to show it so let's refresh now this time we should not get any errors so first time opening the 2019 to 2020 perfect now i'm opening 21 to present you can see 21 to present 2020 to present here also 2020 to 2018 to 2019 so that's all guys this is about the edit and update operations so i'm going to delete this oh that's all so in the next lecture we will be replicating these experiences to the projects thank you welcome back guys in the last lecture we have completed all the operations for the experiences module now in this lecture we are going to do the same thing for the projects so first let's copy everything before copying we have to create admin projects dot js so here this should be admin experiences yeah so control s uh, just copy everything and put it in the admin projects so instead of experiences just make it admin projects admin projects here also admin projects so here also instead of experiences let's have projects uh, show edit model all these things is absolutely fine so here instead of update experience just have update project here also add experience should be replaced with add project then after uh, this is common here also delete project delete project fine so here uh, instead of add experience you should have add project here also instead of experiences uh, let's have projects projects here also project so now uh, it should be first one project dot title so instead of period you should have uh, project dot title project dot title and here uh, i'm going to have company so instead of company let's have an image so let's have an image img so it should be project dot image uh, i'm going to write class name uh, h62 oh not 62 okay let's make it h62 w uh, 82 or 80 let's see whether we have the appropriate uh, css or not we don't have 62 so let's make it 60 and 80 and we have the description so this is fine uh, but the thing is uh, let's make this project to experience here also experience okay uh, the only issue is we might not have the description in the projects data so let's have the laram ipsum 
okay lorem ipsum where it is it might be present in the projects so let's have like this and go to the projects data okay so let's remove everything what we have and add like this so okay this is not formatted yet so let me open a notepad and format it for the correct way so this should come here here also this should come here bottom thing this should come here now let's copy and paste it yeah now this is perfect paste update paste update paste and update update and the last one that's all so i think we are good so let's have this notepad like this only it might be useful later okay so let's go to the output once we don't have the project data yet so go to the admin piece and create projects as like experiences projects here also admin projects yep yep experience is not defined in the admin projects okay so we need to still refactor the data okay where it is line number 89 let's expand this okay so this should be project and this should be also project yep we are good now let's see still we are seeing why experiences data something is wrong admin projects go to the index uh, i am imported from the admin projects only then why it is showing oh here you have to change the key name it should be four now let's go to projects super you can see we got the projects like this awesome right so let's have some space here projects uh have some gap 5 and instead of 4 uh, i'm going to make it 3 for projects yeah these are looking clean okay so now let's work on the edit and uh, delete so delete would be same as it is and in the edit only we have to change some fields so let's work on that fields first one will be uh, instead of period let's have title here also title here also title then after you will be having the image url you can call it as image label will be image url if you want to up, uh, add the upload capability you can add it i'm ignoring that here image then we will be having what uh, what 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 description description yeah description here also description so let's remove this here also let's have 
description i think we are good the only thing is we need to add the skills or technologies so technologies technologies here also i'll just use technologies okay so let's see whether technologies is an array or uh, yeah it is array so while submitting we have to update it okay so right now technologies should be text area text area uh, i think we are good so here also while populating the initial values so where it is uh, form so if the initial values are present we are going to make it dot 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 initial values set selected item for edit and here i'm going to write technologies technologies is equal to so select selected item for edit if it has the technologies i'm going to uh, separate it with the comma and space hmm okay guys i think we are good so let's click on any one of the edit model so here you can see mm, we got everything but uh, we need to change the uh, technologies uh, uh, component so here this should be text area description should be text area and here uh, technologies should be normal input field only input field and label should be technologies okay that's fine so we can separate using the comma now let's go to the back end and write the api so just copy all the experience apis or i don't want to copy because my github copilot will perform more than copy so add project okay so i'm just keep on pressing the i keep on accepting the github copilot snippets you can see i'm just adding the project project added successfully catch block status 500 throw the error so just i am maintaining this structure data success message now the next one will be update project so same try we will get a project details we are going to find using the underscore id it's new and response dot status 200 data project success true message project updated successfully catch response dot status 500 that's all now the last one should be delete project same delete project try block add project project success true project deleted successfully catch that's all i believe yes okay so now we have the add project update project and the delete project so first let's try the add project so add project i'm going to have a to-do list project name is the to-do list image url i'm going to copy something to do list image so i'm just copying this image copy image address and i'll put it here and description should be a uh, first project and skills i am using uh, javascript react technologies i have used add request failed with status 500 let's see what went wrong network click on add so add project is throwing an error link okay okay link is not there yeah so we need a link uh, go to the admin projects so as like the technologies just use link here also demo link link is nothing but demo link and also one more change we have to do means 
you have to convert the string to array and the technology should not be a string it should be an array so here on on finish i'm going to write values dot technologies is equal to values dot technologies dot split off array mm not this you have to get it like array okay const temp technologies temp technologies is equal to values dot technologies uh it's values dot technologies is equal to temp technologies mm go to about once there we have already written yeah it's right now let's hit on the save button this time it should work so link nothing add project added successfully if you scroll down i got the to do list now let's try to edit so edit went wrong here so let me uh, inspect and see what is the error cannot read properties of join so got it so here in the form initial values we have written this uh, join right so here write a question mark now let's click on edit button edit yeah so technologies i'm just writing javascript and react update now let's edit this uh technologies are not getting stored uh i'm not sure why but the data is updating okay so instead of first project i'll make it first project description to cross check whether the edit operation is working or not uh, cannot read properties of split uh there also you have to do the same thing write a question mark or mtr yeah now let's try first project description update it got updated now let's see by using the local host 3000 we should get the last one to do list superb here you can see we got it now i'm going to delete that it got deleted if i refresh i should not see the to do list that's all it's perfect now so we are done with the projects also so the only thing we are left is courses so in the next lecture we are uh, will be working on the courses thank you Welcome back guys in the last lecture we have completed the projects module in the admin panel so now in this lecture we are going to work on the courses so it is almost similar to the projects only where we have the image a uh, course title and some description and also a link tag so if you want to keep that link tag here you can keep it or else you can ignore it that's up to you so first let me go to the admin and i'm going to create a new component called as the courses or else admin courses admin courses dot js so we have to copy the admin projects complete thing and replicate it in the courses so now uh, we have to uh, replace admin projects with admin courses admin courses and then uh these projects with courses wherever there is projects let's make this courses and here wherever there is project make it course course that's all i think we need so if anything goes wrong we will check it later 
so now let's go to the uh, admin home and here I'm just copying this tab pane I'll just replicate this and here I'm going to have courses here I'll just make it 5 instead of admin projects let's make admin courses yeah that's all now let's go to the back end and write the APIs mm, go to the portfolio route then after uh, let me show you uh, as per the add project and everything copy and replicate it for the course so wherever there is core project make it or else let's replace manually so project should be replaced with course yeah course uh, here also course here also course here also course not this yeah and here also course added successfully course added successfully here also course yep now let's go to the update course update course course here also let's have replace project with course wherever it is there yeah course updated successfully so the last one will be delete course delete course here also C O U R S C course the last one yep I think this is what we need course deleted successfully yeah the APS are also modified as per the course now let's close this and go to the admin courses here let's check whether the APS are pointing to the correct endpoint or not so delete course is correct and add course is correct also update course is also correct so there is nothing wrong in this so okay let's go and hit the api and one thing uh, we don't need in the course form is technologies so click on the return go to the model we don't need this technologies form yep so we got the courses so react development course node.js core html css yep everything is working uh, looking good the only thing is we need to have the description so let's copy the description and add it so lorem ipsum copy go to the courses so here i am just writing update update here also let's update update yeah this is the last one okay so then we are good with the courses so let's refresh now we should get the description also courses yeah we got the description so now uh, let's go and uh, what we can do uh, edit one description so here you can see we have this uh, node.js course right so it should not be role it should be uh, title course title already we have this node.js course so we don't require this so we have maybe we have this two times so let's get rid of that uh yeah 
we don't need this we just need course title and description and also for image we are going to uh, write some property called as rounded so to look good yep nice so let's go to the edit of this node.js course so everything is working fine so instead of node.js course i'm going to update it as backend course backend course update awesome here you can see backend course now let's see in the local host 3000 you can see backend course this is fine now let's try to add a new course oh here we have to change this add project is not responding it should be add course refresh courses add course so here i'm going to write uh, title will be python python development course development course image url so i'm just uh, i'll just copy some python logo python logo okay this one not looking good anyhow we are going to delete it yeah i'll just copy this copy image address and i'll put it here description mm, i'll copy the lorem ipsum only copy and paste it oh it already got pasted so i don't need link copy request failed with status code 500 maybe we are missing something let me open the network add so link is required okay we have to give some link nothing add it here you can see course got added so i got the course python development so if you observe when we click on add or edit it is showing add experience and also you can see it is still uh, empty uh, it not empty so to resolve this error you have to do one thing so whenever you click on the add button or else after adding the data so where it is yeah this one right okay so we have to clear the form data that is the issue so if you open this add course it is still showing the existing data so to do that uh, we need to clear the form data let's see how to clear the form data in entity and d form reset form reset even i don't know let me cross check we can clear the form this dot props no we cannot do this okay so we have this uh, method just copy and form is equal to use form and they are applying form is equal to form here form is equal to form where is it yeah form is equal to form and after uh, finishing the operation it is showing form dot reset fields so here also on success i am going to reset it or any uh, edit also even for the edit also so now let's uh, refresh once add a new course so title i'll just write which one golang golang so image i'll just uh, copy this description i'll leave it empty uh, link something request failed i think description is also required yeah so it got added but now i'm going to click on the add course once again this time we should get the empty fields 
here you can see we got the empty fields so let me refresh okay go to the courses so let's delete these two course deleted here also course deleted now let's have the titles properly so it should be add course and uh, edit course even for the projects also we have to do the same thing add project and edit project add project and uh, edit project okay so everything is looking good awesome now let's try to view admin panel in the uh, uh, sorry we are left with one more section contact right so in the next lecture we will complete the contact section as well as the responsiveness of the admin panel thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the contact form so we already have the contact data here right so this data we are going to change it dynamically so for this i am going to replicate the intro so let me have intro data before that let me create admin contact dot js rfce oh we need not to do this go to the intro copy everything put it in the admin contact so instead of admin intro let's make it uh, admin contact admin contact replace it and coming to the data so it should be portfolio dot contact portfolio dot contact so we don't need the welcome text we don't need the first name and last name we just need the name itself so just name here also just name then we need uh age okay name gender gender here also i'll just write gender so let's remove this first bottom things which we don't require so after gender we need uh age A is capital. Here also age. Here also age. Then after we have email. Then after we have mobile. It should not be phone. It should be mobile. Mobile. Here also mobile. Here also mobile. And last but not the least, address. Address you can specify the country name also. So I think we are good. Here also instead of update intro, just have update contact. Yep. Let's go to the index. Have the last tab. Contact. Six. here i am going to write admin contact that's all let's see contact we got the date populated so now let's try to change the name from the admin panel so instead of my name oh i think we don't have the api ready let's go and write the api very simple only update contact so same as like the contact find one and update we are going to get the id and the body let's close these response dot send success true contact updated successfully so that's all now let's click on the update so john uh john lenin 
John Lennon. I'm going to update the name as John Lennon. Save. Contact updated successfully. Now let's see. Mm, something went wrong here. It's not updated successfully. Update contact is the route. Let's see where it is pointing. Slash API slash pro. Oh, it should not be intro dot id. It should be contact dot id. Yeah. This time it should work. Save. Cannot read properties of undefined. Hmm. What is the issue? Oh, spelling is wrong here. Contact. Yeah. Let's try this time. Contact updated successfully. Uh, still the data is not getting updated. Something is still wrong. Portfolio dot contact uh, dot underscore ID. It is the post request and pointing to update contact success and why it is not working. This is the route update contact contact dot find one by update and request dot body. Mm, let's see whether we have the contact model correct or not. Correct only. Mm, what is the issue? Let's refresh this page only. Oh, it got updated here. Oh, sorry guys. I think uh, we are checking here, but we have to check at the bottom. Yeah, here we have to update. Yeah, it is working fine now. So John Lennon, perfect. So now let me write my name only. Uh, space ready. Uh, space ready save now let's see awesome so we don't need this id property so what i'm going to do means go to the contact in the pages contact.js so here we have this contact right so just write contact dot underscore id equal to undefined That's all. So it will be removed. Mm. Or else it's showing undefined. Or else just write delete contact dot underscore id. This would be better. Refresh. Why it is throwing the error? Cannot delete property. Mm. What is this? Okay, first let's try to print this in the console. Console dot log contact. What the contact we have this underscore id property. Then why it is not deleting? delete contact dot underscore id throwing error or else let's have contact contact dot underscore id equal to something i'll write empty string Still it is not working. Cannot assign object read only properties. Okay, okay. So here underscore ID got it. Let's try to do one thing. Write an empty object. 
refresh still it is throwing the same okay let's get rid of this and while looping only we will check that so here we are looping it right i am just writing if key is not equal to equal to underscore id then you have to render else ignore it yeah here you can see there is no kind uh, underscore id now also decrease the space we don't need that much space gap one right we don't need the gap one yeah this is perfect so that's all guys this is about the dynamic now let's go to the admin ones so we don't have any issues with the normal so first let's have a title here admin panel go to the index.js so after the header uh, let's have an h1 so admin or else you can write portfolio admin portfolio admin so it should have class name text to excel and uh, my5 uh, text primary text primary mm, i'm not able to see this where it is Hmm. Header. Oh, I am I am writing in the normal portfolio home. No, we have to write it in the admin home. Here. Yeah, now it is perfect. So instead of this empty file, okay, here just have p file. P file. perfect and we know we don't need this uh, mt5 and uh, all these things okay what is this extra space this is okay text to excel p5 is too high so let's have only px5 px5 not here it's be here no <coughs> not working so here let me write here p2 and here also px5 and here also px2 and p oh, why it is not working 3 okay px5 py2 this is better yeah so portfolio admin now uh, first let's go to the every tab in the mobile view perfect so this is also perfect so this is gone so you have to do only one change go to the admin projects sorry not projects experience so here we have written grid grid calls for right so here just make it sm grid calls 1 so i want only one row one column in the mobile view that means for one column i want one row that's all here you can see even for the projects also do the same admin projects go to the data where it is here so sm grid calls 1 that's all perfect the last and one will be courses do the same thing courses where it is mm 
courses 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 here sm grid calls 1 the last one contact so contact is fine we don't have any issues so now let's see whether we could style these tabs or not of course we can style but we have to find the entity classes and all those things so let's see uh, this is the entity tab so if you want uh, data tabs in the vertical order also you can do that so let me show you how to do it so go to the admin index here we have the tabs right just write layout uh, something where it is align or layout okay let me check the entity for that i forgot the names entity tabs let's play with the tab styling now so disable centered icon extra okay centered icon extra content we have card type okay so these are the different uh, stylings but we don't need that mm. where is vertical tab centered size we have okay let me search vertical yeah so this is the vertical tab what we have to pass let me cross check the code tab position okay maybe this tab position here you can see tab position let's try to apply that try go and try tab position left let's see the output yeah so this is fine and looking much good so experiences projects courses and contact yeah so much better than the normal view so let's see yeah even for the mobile view also it look good or else in the mobile view we can change it if you want uh, how to do that mm. so here only we will see whether we have that uh, option for the mobile view or not mm, maybe we don't have that we have to use either one only so this is the problem mm, size we have but we don't have the responsiveness let's search no we don't have it so better try to keep the uh, top only so let's get rid of this because if you keep the tab order at the uh, top so it will be work both for mobile view as well as the web view so let's see whether we could style the tabs or not close all okay so first let's find the class name so this is the tab and this is the tab list so this for this tab list let's apply a property justify content space between not working so nothing is working here uh, at least let's apply background color red so background color is applying perfectly but we don't need that mm, if you want to apply the background color again you have to change the active border color and all the stuff so better just 
leave it as it is so because these tabs are not from the tailwind css it would take lot of times to style this because no one will see the admin panel the people will see only the normal portfolio so that we we can style with the tailwind css as like we want so admin panel is just for the functional level so we have to make the dynamic portfolio and that should be controlled at any place and at it any time so here you can see the save button is cutting so let's have uh, go to the index and for this uh, px5 and also pb10 this is fine courses fine projects fine experience about intro so that's all guys this is about the admin panel so let's have some styling for the at least a header either border or something just have an hr here mm or else you can do like section title so go to the section title and bring this here copy the code and put it here remove this py10 and make text primary title is nothing but admin portfolio admin portfolio admin yeah this is looking much better but we just have to add some padding so p3 px5 py 2 or 3 that's all even this color also i'm going to change it bg gray 500 yep portfolio admin so that's all guys thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the admin login functionality so because this is a portfolio application admin cannot be accessible to all the users so admin can be accessible to you if it is my portfolio i can only access my uh, admin panel or else anyone can change the details in that portfolio so we should have a normal login screen where we can put the username and password in the database so the database will be on our control so you can change that any time so first let's go to the back end and create a user so here i'm going to add data insert document so i'll just write username is equal to i'll just write satya195 and i'll just write password is equal to something so you should not disclose the password because here we are not implementing any security mechanisms like jwt authorization anything so you have to keep it uh, secure so i'll just write my mobile number as my password so that's all so this is a sample user in the users collection so username and password these two will be there so now let's go to the model go to models and create a simple user model const hmm user model is equal to oh sorry first you have to import mongoose const mongoose is equal to require mongoose const user schema is equal to mongoose dot schema name not name username username type string require true unique true password type string require true that's all we don't need email just close this module dot exports is equal to mongoose dot model it should be users okay so now uh, let's go to the you can have that user route in the portfolio portfolio only or else if you want to create any other you can do 
so i'll create only here itself now why separate login so admin login or user login anything so admin login is the route admin dot find one okay so let me uh, accept all the things okay we don't need everything here we are just implementing the sample login try and catch so later we will implement uh, what it is uh, security mechanisms everything so right now this is enough okay so in the try block first i am going to uh, find the user const user is equal to require slash model slash user model so i am just checking uh, user dot password and user dot name directly const user is equal to await user dot find one with uh, username is equal to request dot body dot username and uh, password is equal to request dot body dot password if user login successfully else uh, what it is that's all okay guys so invalid username or password now let's go to the app.js and create a login page for the admin go to the pages so this is admin right i am going to create a page called as login.js rfce rfce so here i am going to write app.js I'm just implementing the simple login as I said this is not any um, uh, secure login so admin login so admin login if it is successful they will go to admin panel let me go to the login so here I'm just keeping login okay so now uh, let's go to the Mm, where it is uh, index here so I'm just creating a simple form so where you have the user object so here I'm not using entity forms so I'm just writing const uh, user set user username password that's all password that's all we need and here I'm just writing h1 login input text password so just copy this complete div and put it at the center of the page so first let's see what is the output if i go to login oh why there is nothing here oh it should be admin login should be admin login yeah so now what I'm going to do means I'll just copy this div and I'll put it inside another div so this div will have class name flex flex uh, justify center item center item center and h screen justify center item center h screen and this div should have class name just w96 let's see the output we got the login form now for this div also i'm going to write flex gap phi and also p phi shadow border and border gray 500 
simple and this should be flex call flex call and that's all so here i'm just writing the name as my name and i'll just write admin login admin login class name is equal to text to excel and after this i'm going to write an hr hr yes so looking clean i'm not going to style this admin panel because this is just for the view and then after i'm going to write a button for the submit login so i don't want this rounded don't want the rounded yep so then what we can do means on click for this you just need to write on click on click is equal to write the function login so here i'm just writing the function const login is equal to so i think we don't get anything here so just write try catch block try catch try catch and here i'll just write const response is equal to const response is equal to await okay let me write the equal to symbol await axios axios dot post uh, slash api slash api slash portfolio slash admin login and we are sending the user so if user okay if response dot success if response dot data dot success we are going to put the token in the local storage else we are going to store uh, ad, uh, ad, uh in from the entity only i am going to show the message message from the entity message dot error here also i am going to write above message dot success response dot data dot message that's all and uh, in the catch block also message dot error and here let me dispatch const dispatch set dispatch u state is equal to null and here i am going to write um, dispatch show loading dispatch show loading and after getting the response it should be dispatch hide loading dispatch hide loading here also it should be dispatch hide loading that's all so i think we are good we are not sending actually we are not sending any data from the back end so instead of token you just need to put response dot data so whatever the response dot data that we will send from the back end that we will put with the token in the local storage so token is nothing but the user object only because we are not implementing the jwt so in future we will implement uh, based on the security mechanisms so right now we will put the token that's all okay now let's refresh and try to login so at least uh, have the username and uh, placeholders 
placeholder username here placeholder password so username i am going to write the 195 password double nine eight nine six four nine two seven eight login dispatch is not a function oh sorry const c o n s t const dispatch is equal to use dispatch react dot use dispatch actually it should be imported from the react redux that's all yeah now let's hit the api username satya195 password uh hmm, double nine eight nine six four nine two seven eight login login successfully and now i'm in the admin panel so now there are some more conditions so if there is no logged in user in the local storage we should not able to see the admin panel we have to uh, send the user to uh, what it is directly to the login page so that condition we are going to write in the next lecture thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the local storage and some um, normal security about the login uh, mechanism so first thing is uh, we have to store the data in the string format so it should be json dot stringify json dot stringify response dot data response dot data and then after let me write so let me remove the local storage also local storage so here uh, if you go to the admin index i'm going to write a use effect i'm going to write a use effect so that means if there is no local storage uh, if there is no token in the local storage i'm going to send the user to login page use effect is not imported yeah so the condition would be like this if uh, if local storage if not not local storage dot get item token so window dot location dot href should be admin login that's all so simple actually that is not the standard code so as i said we will implement in the further uh, next releases okay suppose if i go to admin it won't allow me to go to the admin now oh i think the data present in the local storage may be yeah let's re delete this clear everything till it is not there okay i have just removed deleted now let's refresh go to admin yeah now i am not able to see the admin page because there is no user in the local storage now uh, let's see some more styling for the login page so for this i am going to have this is login right i'll just have bg primary bg primary and this div will be text uh, bg white that's all so instead of my name just write portfolio admin login so it should be portfolio admin login let's see now yeah portfolio admin login if i press login 
invalid username and password i cannot see the admin screens that's all so i think we are good so now uh, one more thing is so if you do the if you go to the admin once so it will navigate me to the admin login right so if i write valid things Double nine eight nine six four nine two seven eight. Login successfully, and if I go to local storage application, so here we have the password also. We should not uh, show uh, show the password here. So for that, what you have to do means go to the backend. So admin login. You can do one thing here. user dot password is equal to user dot password is equal to md string and also in the admin home page we should have the logout functionality so this is the header right uh okay so let's have these two in a separate div and then i'm going to have a simple h1 text h1 dot underline dot text primary logout so here we have this logout i'll keep it here that means for this main div you just have to apply justify between justify between and for this div you have to apply class name uh these things that's all yeah so we have this logout button so let's increase the font uh, weight not font weight font style text excel and also cursor pointer cursor pointer so now for this i am going to write a function on click local storage dot remove token and navigate to uh what we can call uh login page that's all so let's log out you can see this is the admin part login so that's all guys so in the next two lecture we will be working on the deployment thank you welcome back guys in this lecture we are going to work on the deployment of our portfolio admin not only admin the complete portfolio mon stack dynamic portfolio application so first of all let's go to the normal thing visitors part so this is the visitors part so everything is loading perfect without any issues so now let's go to the uh back end so for the deployment so you have to make changes in two files server.js as well as the back end package.js both back end only and nothing will be there in the front end for the deployment changes so this static data you can get rid of we don't require this yeah so first let's start with the changes of server.js so let me import a module called as the const path path is equal to require path then after you just have to write deployment conditions so first you have to check whether the code running environment is the production or not so i am just writing if process dot env dot node env is equal to equal to production that means it is not in local so yeah i already got the snippet so let me explain this 
so here you can see i got two uh, different statements the f both are related to the uh, client part because the server will be deployed to the heroku and we just have to specify the client location and some details so here first first statement will be app dot use express dot static path dot join directory name and the directory name will be client so after deploying we have to tell the compiler this is my client folder so whatever the folder whatever the client name it would be after deploying after the npm run build we will get a new folder here that is called as the build folder so this is the statement then after for all the api request we are sending same path dot join directory name so client build index dot html so this is the deployment code so even i am not sure exactly what all this so from long time i am writing these things only and this will vary from uh, for server to server so every time i use it to deploy in the heroku so this is the heroku deployment configuration uh, i think we are good mm, okay so now let's go to the package.json so in the package.json you have to add the scripts so let me go to the heroku scripts of my application so i will provide this link in the description you just have to use the same why it is not opening heroku scripts yeah it got opened here so just copy the scripts and paste it in the package.json paste it in the package.json remove the existing so here also same this is just for the heroku not for everything yeah so then i am going to write engines so we just have to specify the uh, javascript and uh, server interpreter which version of node we are using and which version of npm we are using so we just have to tell that first one will be node sorry let me write here node something and the second one will be npm node npm that's all so now let's try to find our node.js and npm servers so here you just have to specify node hyphen v 15.7.0 15.7.0 and let's try to find out the npm npm hyphen v it's b 7.4.3 7.4.3 that's all guys okay now let me cross check the server.js code so this one is correct but here i don't require this path.join mm. mm, okay let's try to deploy so later if you get any errors we'll check it close everything so first we need to send this complete root folder to the github so i'm going to get rid of the Mm, changes in the client so in the client i'm just running rm dot git so it will remove all the existing git related information in the client folder so we can directly send the complete folder to the github not here click on this publish to github mon portfolio udemy it should be a public repository and don't send node modules okay that's all so go to github here you can see i got the message successfully published to github so if i go to my repositories i should get a latest one yeah mon portfolio udemy updated 12 seconds ago now we have to deploy this repository to the heroku so if you don't have the account in the heroku please create a one now let me go to the heroku server and i'm going to log in with my credentials shell learners 1 and password will be i won't tell you
Ya. Starting number Hiroku Free Dinos. This will no. Oh. Starting November 28, 2022, free Heroku Dinos, free Heroku Postgres, free Heroku Data for Redis will no longer be available. If you have apps using any one of these resources, you must upgrade to paid plans by this date to ensure your apps to continue. What the heck? Heroku is stopping the free services, guys. So be hurry. So this is August ending. So we have time up to November 28th. So let me deploy. Mon portfolio Udemy. So you should not do all these things. You have to specify your name in your case. So create app. Now uh, click on the GitHub, and I'm writing. Our, our repository name will be Mon Portfolio Udemy. Search. You can see I got the repository. Click on the connect. Now you just need to click on this enable automatic deployment. So the last step here is deploy branch. So it might take a while around uh, two or three minutes. So until then, please wait. So if you want to observe what's going on the server, you can uh, check these logs running Heroku post build. So it will install all the NPM modules that we already used in the client and server and it will set up the MongoDB and all those things. So let's wait until it gets deployed. All right, guys, so we got the message your app successfully deployed. So click on the view. Awesome. Here you can see, got it. So now our application is live, Mon Portfolio Udemy. So let's close everything now. Perfect. So looking very clean and neat, open in the responsive view. So nothing got broken, everything is working fine. So that's all guys. So. We have completed the part one and part two like season one and season two. So in the season three, we are going to make the styling dynamic. So here we just made the portfolio dynamic with just uh, text projects, experience, all those things. So in the next part, that means in the next release, we are going to work on the styling. So we can change this background color. We can change this text colors, buttons, about animations, everything. So all the things we are going to make dynamic. So thank you. See you all in the part three. Bye.